Norwegian or English weekdays. The rotating 12-hour bezel lets you keep track of another time zone, and the unique hands, indexes, and bezel numerals are equipped Gennem generationer løber et sammenhold. En kerne af kærlighed, der spreder sig som åre. Sådan er familiebånd. Og midt i det hele står køkkenet. Nordic Creation fra HTH. Massiv E, fingertappede detaljer. Ikke ligefrem skabt med kaos for øje. Men det er lige meget. For med hjertet i skuffen skal det hele nok gå. Se det er køkkenkærlighed, der holder. Broadcast your games live. And there's simply so much more on offer. This is quite simply the most integrated chess experience ever. Square Off Pro. Because that's how we roll. Hello and welcome to day five of Norway Chess. And today, for one day only, we will be showing just one game between Napomniachi and Car not Carlsen, but it's the all-Russian duo of uh, Sergei Karyakin. And the reason this is, is because this is actually a free day. And uh, Napomniachi, of course, he was delayed because of visa issues. And we are now hosting the postponed match today. And I'm International Master Ivan Kahalska, and it is a great pleasure to be here in the studio alongside editor of the New in Chess magazine, Dirk Jan. 
pleased to be here, Ivanka. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure. And, uh, well, we have a special day, just one game. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are just as many commentators as players today, <laughs> yeah. which is not something you see every day. And I think we even have more arbiters than players. So um, everything should, um, should run smoothly. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, as you said, it was the, the game that sh was supposed to be played on the first day which was a bit of a disappointment that uh, Jan Nepomniachi didn't make it here. I think it, it's, it's very kind that people ca keep saying that there were visa issues. He just let his visa expire. Oh. <laughs> but, that is, but, but I think that's so, so good that, uh, that there was action taken very quickly and it was amazing how, yeah. uh, how this was solved. Um, because those are not uh, easy things. And we were very happy here. Well, we had a great match yesterday mm -hmm. between uh, Magnus Carlsen and uh, Jan Nepomniachi. How, how did you experience that one? I mean, it, did you see it as a, well, as a prologue to the of match? Course. And of course. Yeah. I mean, for us, yeah. it was a precursor to the match. And it was, yeah. you know, it was, it was a game to kind yeah. of establish the mindset who had that psychological advantage. Yeah. And I can tell you, the atmosphere was very tense, especially when they played the classical game, yeah. when it was that Berlin defense. And it, it looked like uh, Napomniachi was doing OK. Mm. But, you know, there was pressure and it was mm -hmm. Magnus that was applying it. And it yeah. felt like Magnus had kind of just leveled up because to be honest, he's had a little bit of a slow start in this particular tournament. He was yep. struggling against Ariantari and he was also uh, struggling against Perugia. In fact, yep. he should have lost the Armageddon match. Mm. But uh, it was a completely different Magnus that showed up yeah. yesterday. And like Magnus said, <laughs> he wanted to torture Napomniachi and uh, he could do that over the chessboard, make him suffer. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Do, do, do you think that uh, after the after that loss that uh, Jan Nepomniachi suffered and that we may see this resonate today or I mean this is one of the things that we are wondering about of course uh, did, it, did it affect him or is it just something that he shrugs off and just continues business as usual well this is the this is the issue mm. I mean every chess player is motivated by revenge and to want to win mm. and uh, we do know that Sergei Karyakin and uh, Jan Napomniachi are good friends. They worked mm. together in the 2006 World Championship match between Sergei Karyakin and uh, Magnus Carlsen. Mm. And they've been hanging out a lot here in this tournament. Yeah. So they, bo they also incidentally both worked with Vladimir Potkin, who is now uh, Napomniachi's uh, second. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it could yeah. very well yeah. be that the players might have a very short classical match and then just decide to take it to Armageddon and see what happens yeah. there. After all, the winner of the Armageddon match will take take back uh, one and a half points, whereas the loser one point, which yeah. is not bad. Oh. Um, but, you know, there's pride at stake and yeah. every chess player wants to be seen to be improving. And I, I, I get the feeling that Napomniachi will be looking to bite back and just to say, yeah. hey, I am world championship challenger for a reason. Well, and th these two, I mean, obviously they, uh, well, they get along well. They, they, they well, as you say, there's this connection uh, via uh, Vladimir Potkin. But on the other hand, I mean, they are rivals. And uh, uh, I mean, to be the number one player in Russia, that says something. At the, that was Kayakin at some point. Now it's, it's mm -hmm. clearly, uh, well, cl it, it is Nepomniachi. I, I think it's Nepomniachi, then it's Krishuk, then it's uh, yeah. Kayakin. Um, and the interesting thing, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's remarkable that not only Kayakin and Magnus Carlsen were born in 1990, but Nepom, uh, but Nepomniachi as well. Mm -hmm. So first, when, when Magnus was playing this match, he said, oh yeah, that's interesting because we, they were born in the same year. And we're getting a similar story now in Dubai in uh, November and uh, December. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, whilst we're waiting for the game to kick off, um, mm. maybe we can take a look at the standings. And yep. uh, it's four games have been played so far. And at the top of the table is Richard Rapport with two classical victory victories mm -hmm. and uh, one Armageddon victory and one Armageddon loss. He has eight mm. and a half points. Magnus Carlsen is there on six. Jan Pomniachi has four points as does Sergei Karyakin. Ali Reza Ferugia and Ari Antari both have three points. So 
maybe when we look at the standings, we think, well, Jan Pomniacci and Sergei Karyakin, it's not yep. just pride, it's not just establishing nope. who nope. is nope. the strongest Russian player, but might be wanting to take the points because after all, the format of the tournament, if we take a look at it, it's uh, three points for the victory and uh, one, so, sorry, three points for the victory and no points for a loss. And uh, that is if the victory happens in a classical match. Yeah. And uh, there you can see there. And uh, we have a rather unique time control. Each player will start the game with 120 minutes. That's two hours. And there is no increment. The players will only get a 10 second increment after move 40. And uh, if the game draws, this is where everything gets really exciting yep. and the drama starts and uh, the audience get very entertained because we have an Armageddon match where white will have 10 minutes on the clock, black will have seven minutes. And once again, there is no increment until move 41, upon which the players will get a very valuable one second increment. Yeah. <laughs> Don't underestimate that uh, golden second. No. And uh, the, the player with the black pieces will get draw odds. So, uh, yeah, in that sense, it is uh, a very important game because, well, both can land a really serious blow, mm. take three points and uh, move into second place and challenge. Um, well, the hero of the tournament so far, Richard Rapport, I mean, he's been amazing. He's won two games. Uh, he's the only one who won a classical game so mm -hmm. far and even even twice and with uh, with great play. Are you, are you surprised by his performance? I mean, no. Mm -hmm. To be no. honest, I mean, he, he's quite an energetic uh, player. I love his style. It's very unconventional. No. I can see in a time control where there isn't any increment on the board that his style is actually very difficult to handle. Mm. Having said all that, he has won two phenomenal positional masterpieces. I mean, they've been brilliant yeah. and uh, he plays them down because that's his modest nature, but yeah. really spectacular chess there. Yeah. And uh, I think he's a man in form and this this clearly showed actually in game one. So I'm not particularly surprised. And uh, there we see Nepomniachi getting ready for He's his game, adjusting the pieces. Counting the pieces and they're, yep, they're all there. Yep. So um, that looks good. Mm -hmm. And mm. uh, <laughs> incidentally <laughs> talking about Richard, mm. he was telling me over lunch mm. this, uh, <laughs> that uh, if Nepomniachi opened with E4, this was a sign that he was in a peaceful mood. If he opened mm. with d4, c4, any other move, <laughs> then we're in, <laughs> we're in for, for the long haul. Yeah. Okay. So the last two times these players met each other, mm. um, it was actually in the Skilling Open and the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. So this wasn't classical, yeah. but they just agreed a draw in the mm. 14 move Berlin endgame. Yeah. And uh, there you can see it's two, two points apiece with nine draws. And in fact, in their last classical encounter, Jan Pomniacci was victorious. It was that, was a, that was a very important one because mm. you could say that won him the championship. Exactly. The, uh, it was and, a, that, and, and he played D4. He did play D4. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was in the Russian 2020 championships. Yeah. So uh, What they call the uh, super final. I mean, I, I always like that, that, that in Russia they have this building up I mean you have all these subdivisions and then at some point you have the semi-finals and then you don't get the final no you get the super final and um, yeah this is the well he won it twice I think in uh, 2010 and 2020 mm -hmm. um, quite remarkable Ooh. he's uh, drinking something from a thermos flask <laughs> yeah, is, I uh, think he brings his own tea or his own Ooh. magic potion I've never actually noticed that before. I mean, mm. do you happen to know what, uh, what magical he, elixir he's drinking? I don't know. In, in, well, sometimes with the Chinese players, you were wondering what kind of miracle drink they, they brought. But um, I don't know if it's just tea. I think with the Chinese, I heard mm. that it was ginkgo. Ah, okay. Which is, uh, and uh, this is, uh, it gives you energy. Mm. Yes, and they also sometimes would rub this uh, stuff. Tiger Balm. Yeah, Tiger Balm. Tiger Balm is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. And <laughs> it's becoming more and more mainstream here in the mm. West. And uh, Nepomniachi is smiling. Well, we're waiting mm. for Sergei Karyakin to arrive, and he is here. Fist pump. Okay. And let the games begin. 
threatened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The players are in a jovial mood, so maybe, yeah. maybe they just want to mm. enjoy the rest yeah, of that, this that's, three day. That's a difficult thing. I, I, I thought when when uh, Magnus and, and uh, Nepo Miyachi yesterday, when they when they met, and you also had this big smile by Nepo, mm -hmm. and then you're just wondering, is that? The, I mean, does it signify? find anything or is it just means nothing or should you get rid of that I mean I mean he's, he's your opponent in the world championship but, um, but of course they they get along well and, and they have a, a history of friendship mm -hmm. so. and uh, yeah, when it comes to mm -hmm. chess and smiling and well I think smiling is a good sign mm -hmm. it just means you're relaxed and often mm -hmm. when you're relaxed this is what is needed to kind of be entirely objective over the board yeah. you can appreciate that if you have a bad position that's okay you yeah. just defend if you have a great position enjoy just uh, play it move by move and uh, well, you see it in many there sports you go. I mean the, the clock has been started what are we expecting e4, e4. oh okay now we're expecting Sergei Karyakin to respond with e5 and he, and he, does. he does. And the knight has come out to f3. Are we going to see knight c6? Yes, absolutely. And now this is the issue. The last bishop moment b5. He can, he's can or bishop c4. Bishop b5. Okay. okay. So if the players are feeling in a peaceful mood, the knight will come to f6. And mm. uh, now I'm expecting castles. <laughs> 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 so the Berlin draw that we're talking about. Oh, it has been played. Mm. So the Berlin draw that we're talking about. Oh. Looks like it's happening. Knight takes pawn and uh, d4, and now the knight will retreat to d6. Yep, and uh, okay, so if we're seeing pawn takes pawn here on the board, no, we're not. Uh -huh. Okay, so we are going to have a Berlin endgame. So pawn takes pawn, and uh, now the knight will come to. Oops, me and my arrows. Okay. And uh, now queen takes queen. And king takes queen. And uh, you know how Nepal actually did suffer yesterday against yeah. uh, Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, that was exactly the same position, right? Yeah, this was exactly the same. And, uh, and in, the, in that game, Magnus followed three with, hang on, let me get the... So I'll just pull up the game because my memory is... Okay, so h3 played. So uh, one of the plans that white has in this position is to put the knight to e4 and, uh, and again to expand on the king side. And so there we have the move h5 played and bishop f4. Players are playing very quickly here. Mm. So, yeah, this is... Uh, well, these are positions that both of them must have spent tons of hours on, or well, at least their computers, or their mm -hmm. seconds. And uh, the bishop moves to e e7 mm -hmm. so that the knight can get to h4 and make some trades. So this is almost similar to the game between Nepomniachi and uh, Magnus Carlsen, except instead of bishop f4, let's go back, knight e2 was the move played. Mm -hmm. But uh, instead we have, no, <laughs> I'm a bit of a newbie to this uh, <laughs> technology, the system, yeah. <laughs> so you'll have to bear with me. Okay, so bishop goes to e6, and uh, both sides are now developing. So the big question again is that again, what is knight going to come, jumps to g5? The knight is getting ready to take on e6 potentially or perhaps rook comes to h6 so are you a big expert on the berlin Jan? Dag Jan? well <laughs> especially on uh, rook h6 because I, I i remember watching the first berlin that uh, kramnik played against uh, uh, kasparov in in london yeah and then at some point uh, i mean every it's it's funny to to think that at, at that time everyone was totally puzzled by what are you what are you doing how can you play this and then at some point, I mean, Black has made 
all the normal moves. And one of the grandmasters there said, well, what's next? And, and I, I was just thinking, and I, well, I mean, I'm not an expert in this at all. But at, at some point I thought, well, maybe, maybe he can play h5 and rook h6. Mm -hmm. And this grandmaster said, well, that doesn't look like a very good idea. And of course, there went the pawn and there went the rook. So um, yeah. uh, that was the, the birth of uh, something that uh, we still see very frequently these days. We, d we do see it very frequently. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea with rook h6 presumably is to defend the bishop mm -hmm. on e6 and just to connect the pieces. And uh, will white, will black be planning to exchange a set of rooks? Yes, mm -hmm. on the board. And uh, what next? Trade or not to trade? Yeah, these are all the subtleties that, um, well, th that they've been studying for so many yeah. hours. And uh, it, it's afterwards is always fascinating to listen to them, what all these nuances, what they are. Uh, I'm a, I must say that for me, this, I mean, all those differences, they are very, I, I mean, I cannot predict them or, or, or pinpoint them. Uh, so you, you're always uh, wondering, uh, how they will explain them and, and, and how they will continue the game. It's, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we have to find out what, um, yeah, what well, let's, examples let's, they are following. Yeah, we, we should do that. Because I must admit, I'm a D4 player, so I'm not so well acquainted with all the plans of the Berlin, despite me having <laughs> heard about it and yeah. uh, seen lots of Grandmaster games. So uh, when it comes to D8, so presume, you know, one thing that I do know is that White's plan is just simply just to push forward with the pawns on the king's side. And again, to just do it in a very controlled manner. And uh, Black, on, in turn, once they've solidified the position, they survived the potential expansion, then it, you know, it will be all about seizing as much space as possible with these pawns on the queen's side. So we do have a trade of rooks. Get rid of those arrows. And uh, now the big question is whether to capture with the king or the bishop. Does it make a big difference? Let's have a look. So if king takes king takes rook, then uh, doesn't look like this. Oh, there's a big, big problem. Oh no, it's okay. This isn't actually possible because after knight takes, you simply go bishop takes rook, and then bishop takes rook and black is absolutely fine. So king takes rook is possible, bishop takes rook, also good, but uh, there's no need to do that. I would simply expect the players to play king takes rook. Is this the main idea? Yes, so... Um, rook takes did, rook. Did, uh, rook, rook has, so rook has, takes has rook been, has, has been played. It has been played, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, now there's a choice between those two. So both are, both are fine. Um, actually, Taking back with the bishop has been played more it's often. It's more often, okay. Then the names are. Mm -hmm. And uh, how does white continue usually after white that? I have to go back here. Imagine maybe knight to goes, knight moves itself to e4 and asks the question to this rook. An alternative, of course, is... Also, Kayakin has played taking back with the king. Oh, he's played... Okay. S small details. <laughs> <laughs> For people exactly. that aren't so familiar with, it, with yeah. the Berlin, it's all hinging on those tiny, tiny things. Mm. So, okay. So now the big question is whether white can move the knight to, e to e4. Maybe if they're feeling aggressive, Let's play g4. Is this possible? Because this is the move that I would be attracted to, just seizing as much space as possible. And after pawn takes and knight coming to h4, seeing whether it's actually possible for white to maintain this pawn on g4. Maybe it is. After knight takes bishop check. Or rook e4. Ah! just spotted that this bishop cannot actually take this pawn because uh, say you make a move like rookie four bishop takes now that would be a big mistake because of knight takes 
F7, so small little details. It's like the butterfly effect to take with the pawn, mm. sorry, to take with the rook with the king or to take with the rook with the bishop. So actual fact, G4 might be possible. So G4 aggressively kicking away the knight and I'm expecting maybe not pawn takes pawn. Moves off the knight H4, rook moves to E4 and then we like a check. Or I'm expecting the more kind of more obvious knight to h4. And now how to continue? So what is the live game? The live game has stopped after king takes uh, king takes rook. Ah, uh, okay. So there's a game Giri right above. Oh, okay. Uh, where the, uh, the knight takes on e6, then okay. then rook takes e6, and then a novelty was g4. Okay, so knight mm. takes e6 is the main, well, is an idea, and after rook takes e6, the now, the, uh, now this idea of g4. Yes, and the alternative was knight e4, which was uh, played by uh, Dominguez. And I have to ask you, mm. what is the overall result of this line? This uh, <laughs> uh, drawish and 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 let's say when there's a result then it very much looks like the uh, rating played uh, mm -hmm. a prominent part okay so uh, so a, a lot of grandmaster draws and uh, have uh, Napomniachi and no, uh, Karyakin actually played in these games before into this line right let me see so I think I did something clever so knight takes a knight e4. Yeah. And he's still thinking, right? Yeah, he's still thinking. But of course, Sergei is a huge specialist in the Berlin defense. Yeah. I mean, this is his bread and butter. I mean, I've always seen him play this. And he neutralized Ariantari with the black pieces mm -hmm. yesterday, yesterday very expertly. So, okay. Yeah, there's another. Uh, there let's uh, let's go back to this. Yeah, the G4 was played by uh, Maxim Vashela Graf against Kayakin. And that okay. was another draw. And G4 was played. Uh, yes. So, we should have. So I should ask you, Dirk. Yeah. So, mm. which one would you prefer? Would you prefer to go knight takes bishop, or would you prefer to go G4? <laughs> Yeah, that's the, the that's the problem. To what extent do you want to commit yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And it feels like G four is slightly more risky, but is that a problem, or is, does it also offer better chances? Right? Mm -hmm. So okay, so he's played. Okay, he's played knight to e four. Okay, so that's uh, any games. I don't think so. Knight e4. Yeah, okay. So that may be a new move. So it might be a new move, but okay, it's very much in the style, you know, if white still has yeah. the option to play knight takes bishop. Also, still has the option of playing g4, and so kind of let and uh, of course just ask black, hey, what are you going to do? So, if you were playing with the black pieces, I would be looking at maybe inspired by despite Ben Apomiachi's game yesterday, mm -hmm. playing b6, <laughs> just uh, taking away some squares. And is there any concrete threat, first of all? Knight takes. Yeah. Yeah, so what is white trying to achieve and what is black trying to achieve? What, what, well, white is simply trying to just... Uh, so black, for instance, is just going to play on these two bishops. I mean, mm -hmm. but first of all, you have to survive the, the initiative that white has, and mm -hmm. you also have to survive the fact that the pieces are quite awkward. Yeah. 
White, on the other hand, is all about controlling these two bishops. In particular, something that we saw yesterday, it became all about this light squared bishop and mm -hmm. this knight. Uh, which one was the better piece? Yeah. And uh, White tends to just push forward in a very controlled manner with G4 and H4. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm yeah, not being very effective with, with this uh, technology. So, so the, okay, yes. but uh, knight, okay, so knight e4 looks to be like a novelty, keeping flexibility. And uh, what next? What next? How is black going to react? So, I mean, my idea is just to play put the knight, put the pawn on b6, because I like pushing pawns. I make no secret of that. And then I would like to play a5 maybe even c5 but okay i'm a little bit reluctant to do that because i give away the d5 square other moves that i could that uh, potentially come to mind would be let's go back other moves that kind of spring to mind are just to kind of wait and see move move the king to move the king to c8 which looks a bit strange. I kind of either want to move my king to e8 or, mm. or to c8. And the reason I can't, not to do seven. But uh, the reason I want to do that is because mm. again, I want to put the, king, the pawn on b6 and just tuck my king away before I can think about moving the pawns forward and maximizing this bishop. Um, okay. And uh, now it's Sergei's time to think. So this is your, how many times have you been to Norway chess? Um, many times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the ninth tournament, so next, next year there will be the, the Jubilee. Uh, and I think I skipped two or three. Okay. Yeah, something like that. So uh, you've seen the progression from, uh, mm. from a normal kind of round robin to fighting chess? <laughs> well, there, were, there always were, were big ambitions. Uh, here, which is what I liked mm -hmm. about the, the, the tournament. Of course, it was in the wake of um, Magnus's uh, rise to fame. So first, of all, we get getting a, a big, important tournament in um, in Norway. And uh, well, actually, the, the, the first successes of of the, the, the tournament were very much linked to Sergei Kayakin, uh, because he he won the first two tournaments. Yes. So it's uh, uh, well. It took Magnus quite some effort, uh, some tries to, uh, to to win the tournament. And now he's won it uh, three times. But then the most successful player uh, after him is uh, Sergei Kayakin, who I think also earned a lot of uh, popularity uh, through those wins. Mm. I mean, he he um, is definitely a popular player in uh, in Norway, which also played a role during the the match. I think, and I think that that's also one of the things that. Um, uh, we should uh, praise the organizers here for and and also Norwegian television that they very early on they realized that uh, we have Magnus but if he is our only hero that's just not enough yeah we need more chess heroes and one of the one of the first uh, that they uh, created was uh, Sergei Kayakin thanks to his uh, wins here mm -hmm. um, I remember going to, to New York for the match and uh, I was getting close to the venue and there was a young man walking there and you could see that he was Norwegian from the Norwegian flag he had on his rucksack. Yes. And uh, so I said, oh, well, what are you looking for? And he said, well, I'm looking for the chess. I said, oh, you come, you come to root for Magnus. He said, no, nah, for the other guy, kayaking. And which I thought was great because this was what um, the... Um, the efforts by uh, Norwegian television and tournaments like Norway Chess mm -hmm. had achieved that you could be a Magnus fan, but you could also be a fan of the yeah. other guy. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah. You know, actually, Magnus has kind of we're in a very unique position where Magnus has just taken the public imagination by yeah. storm. You know, I've kind of said it before many, many times, but Magnus's popularity is such mm. that he's whenever he plays a tournament, especially like the World Rapid and Blitz. When he, when he plays Norway chess, 
his every move is monitored by the general public. Like yeah. Even my hairdressers, and I've been mm. to quite a few, have all known who Magnus yeah. is. So, um, yeah, now I'm just taking a look at the position. So we kind of, I like B6. Uh, I like the idea of expanding with my pawns. Uh, it's just also thinking that because in previous moves we've seen white play knight takes bishop, maybe black can uh, use this and perhaps play bishop to d5. Mm. And uh, in which case it's kind of been pointed out that if, if Napomniachi is again feeling in a peaceful mood, then knight c3 is possible. Mm -hmm. And the game, of course, could repeat. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's, uh, mm. that's kind of quite nice. But not everything is forced. Hang on. Let me find it. So bishop goes to d5. So of course, I mean, the move that I would be thinking of playing mm. would be b3 because mm. after b3, then there's still problems with this bishop. Sorry, this pawn on f7. c4 is now happening and uh, I would be slightly concerned. So I would try to overprotect this f7 pawn by moving my king to e8. And yeah. Well, as you said, uh, the well, black would love to take that those bishops into the end game, mm -hmm. uh, but how do you do that? And, yeah, uh, and of course, we we should really look at what happens. Say, say, say if uh, so, s just king goes to e8, and say white kind of said, okay, fine, I get some free moves, but uh, maybe. This kind of you, you kind of does look quite nice to mm. play c4, but at the same time, you start looking at the squares that is considered the d4 square mm. for the knight, and also the bishop b4 square, and uh, suddenly this rook on h6 is pretty well placed. So I'm not quite sure about mm. that. Is, is that actually what you should do to get a grasp on, on, on this kind of position, just to to see what would you do if you had a couple of free moves, as you say? Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it gives you more insight in what the plans might be. Mm -hmm. Because I, I mean, by simply look, if, if you have a knight dwarf, then it's it's easy to say, okay, we're going to attack here or there. Mm -hmm. uh, but here it's so much more complicated. And here it's all about those small, yeah. subtle things and yeah. figuring out the plans. Um, so, okay, so after mm -hmm. say bishop d5 and say b3, after king goes to e8, which were kind of I wanted to play because I wanted to overprotect this pawn. But, you know, it's not so easy because, I mean, mm. black, I'm just thinking again about this rook on h6, might want to go to g, I've seen this happen, rook mm. to g6, starts putting pressure on the g5 pawn. And uh, still, on the g5 pawn, not the g5 pawn, the g5 knight. <laughs> and then. <laughs> And of course, actually, this is something that we saw ye in yesterday's game that the bishop was okay. I get a bit overact, over eager with these arrows. Um, you must forgive me. I'm not familiar with this uh, program software. Kind of more familiar with sitting in Dirk Jan's uh, seat. No arrows here. <laughs> <laughs> no arrows there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, okay. But is that yeah having the rook on g6? Is that well? I mean, you, let's say you, you always uh, have this idea, okay, there's this, this bishop on f4, I don't want to have it stare at this mm -hmm. rook on h6. Well, for instance, mm. okay, c4, so this mm. was something that we kind of looked at. This rook on h6 is kind of locked out, so I guess you yeah. have to put it on g6. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what mm. else are you doing? Okay, you do concede squares, I mean, so there's like swings mm. and roundabouts, but um, what else? What else to do? Yeah. So white has more space to maneuver. Definitely. And how far can he go? I mean, how, to what extent can he improve his position? I mm -hmm. mean, to me, it feels like b3 and c4 is an improvement. I mean, you 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 grasp even more space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Sergey is uh, having a long think and mm. uh, 15 minutes on the clock. And so he's just coming to, mm. uh, you know, obviously he knows his position. I don't think he maybe mm. knows his position, but he will yeah. be trying to think about what he does know in uh, previous positions. Yeah. So, for instance, he will be thinking about, say, white was 
let's say had White mm. had played this, then after Rook takes, mm. then he would have been trying to think, okay, this is the situation here, this is Black's plan. Should he meet, mm. uh, you know, and what he's trying to do now here, oh, whoops. What he's trying to do after this move is just trying to say, okay, so what is po what kind of ideas does Black play if white were to play knight takes mm. bishop and just hold them in reserve but mm. i mean definitely there's a consequence and i think i think the bishop will maybe will move or we yeah. may, might see a king move to e8 just a very sensible sensible chess but uh it's definitely interesting to see two of these heavyweights uh, i mean in fact give their opinion on on these uh, these positions uh, because I, I was thinking this morning that, I mean, they've both had, well, they're, st they're still very young, th uh, 31, both of them, mm -hmm. but they've already had such such uh, rich careers. And, and we know that whatever happens in the next World Championship cycle, they will both will be there. Uh, I mean, Jan will either be World Champion or uh, he will be uh, uh, the, well, the loser of the match, but then he will go to the candidates anyway. And, um, and Sega Kayakin has qualified for the candidate, so, uh, which I thought was uh, an extraordinary achievement. I mean, that uh, uh, you play a world championship match and uh, well, you lose it after a great fight, and then still to have this motivation to, to come back again. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, mm. just being told that say there's a, like a nasty positional threat that we actually have to look at. So yeah. say black plays c5, mm. normal move. Mm -hmm. White actually has the possibility of playing. Now, Dare Kian, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> can can you see White's positional idea? So he plays c5. Yeah. And uh, the whole there is a. Uh, an idea that I didn't even didn't even care to me, but you can actually play at some stage like knight to f6. Oh wow! Yeah. So let's have let's have a look at that because I, I you know I haven't thought about that kind of thing. I was just obsessed with g4, mm. pawn takes pawn. The knight will come to maybe all the yeah the knight will come to h4, and then. I guess you want to cover this square just in case. Always yeah. in this opening, everything is just in case. Oh, but okay. Again, bishop takes g4. We have to remind ourselves it's not a threat because of knight takes f2. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, get rid of that. And uh, yeah, knight f6. Let's have a look. How does that work out? So after the move, knight f6. And okay, so what happens if? Oh, what, what, what? Is this what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Alrighty. Okay. So, so, so now we have to find out. Yeah. Okay. So what is going <laughs> to happen, right? If pawn takes knight, let's, uh, let's have bishop takes knight. Let's mm. uh, investigate those captures. So is this mm. a well-known idea to put the knight on F6? This is the first. So maybe we, we probably must assume that they, they know about it. Yes. Yeah, so they probably know that uh, it won't come as a bolt from, from the blue to Sergei Karyakin. But, no. you know, pawn takes knight. Okay, so what happens mm. next? So now we go knight takes. Yep. Knight, sorry, flies, just hovering around in the studio. Mm. So knight takes pawn and uh, pawn, pawn takes bishop, pawn takes mm. knight, bishop takes rook, knight takes, ooh. And then, well, that's, this, <laughs> this is this is, is really bad. A deep one. Yeah, this yeah. is bad, and uh, this is bad because the you know the rooks generally fight really well against against uh, let's go like this bishop and knight in an mm. end game, and that's because the rook rooks are actually very long range moves. Uh, it's a long range piece, and it has the capability to flick between the two sides very easily. Mm. And when you combine this with past pawns on both sides of the board, it's just very dangerous. Mm. So that's a no go. And let's just run through that line again, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So knight takes e6, no, that's forced. Pawn takes, 
bishop takes rook, knight takes bishop, knight takes pawn. So this is good. So you can't capture the knight, the, the knight with the pawn. And uh, is it the same after pawn? Oh, and then this is even worse with the bishop. So you don't want that because after knight takes bishop, that would be a problem. So, so the problem, so after knight f6, the best thing to do is to ignore that knight and just pretend it never exists. <laughs> it never moved there and just play something else. But what to play? What to play? So what happens if you were to play? So, okay, knight takes bishop, still a threat. So you need to do something, either move the rook or move this bishop out of the way. So what happens if mm. you, well, if you move this bishop out of the way, then what is gonna be the answer after b3? Uh, then, then you can capture the knight. I forgot that the knight mm. on f6 is on priest. So then that's the point to there. So then you can't go b3, but then you can actually check consequences. And now this knight can go on a bit of a merry adventure, right? You can go to knight g8. <laughs> Back yeah, in I the was room. wondering about how, <laughs> how dangerous it is. If, when, if when the, you, if yeah, when do you see a knight yeah. on uh, the Black Knight starting square? Yeah, so, uh, okay, but how dangerous is this? I mean, it looks very pretty yeah. and everything, but okay, so the rook has to move. Yeah, well, but if you take on g5 and... Yeah, if, if, if will you get out with the knight? Well, if I, if I take with g5, then the, oh, unfortunately there's a, there's a mate on d8. Well, and that's of course a very I'm good attacking, one. <laughs> attacking the rook. Yep. So that's not quite possible. So instead, you let's not take that knight. And instead, you need to move the rook. Now, moving backwards is just passive. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to be doing that. You want to maximize the rook. You put it on the third, mm -hmm. the sixth row for a reason. And uh, I'm guessing that you need to move it. Now the choices are quite limited and you have to be quite systematic about everything. I mean on g6, considering that knight takes bishop might be the next move, mm -hmm. you kind of don't want to put it on g6 because I don't feel the rook is doing anything there. Mm -hmm. So the rook needs to, obviously c c6, this looks awful. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's try to go rook a6, try and gang up on this mm -hmm. pawn and then b3 and then after here. and the rook has found itself in <laughs> a different side of the board, yeah. in a different kind of construct. Yeah, switching. But it's all very com I mean, it, it, it looks like a positional game, but in fact, it's incredibly tactical, this. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's totally, I mean, mm. hang on. I have to, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I have to run through this knight. So, mm. knight f6, you can't, you can't do anything about it. You go bishop c4. Mm -hmm and b3 not a thing so not a move so what you need to do is you need to well, yeah you can also yeah you can check go and, and see where, where the king has to go yeah yeah check, check this is what we looked at yeah. okay the king goes here knight comes to g8 so this kind of almost seems forced i would say i mean is there any alternative to this idea. And now the question is if uh, Kayakin is uh, trying to remember what he analyzed or if this is a new situation for him. No, this looks like it's forced. Uh, no. um, so you mean that probably he is trying to recall what he looked at yeah, at some I'd point? I think we've kind of gone out of the old comparison, recalling. Mm. I think that we're in new ground here. Mm. And uh, what Black has to do is find the find the only move. Is, is, is this an only move? I mean, is Bishop C4 the only move to kind of, I mean, what is, no, because I mean, you have, this Bishop is attacking the Rook. Next move is gonna be Knight takes, <laughs> Knight takes Bishop. So no, unfortunately, Bishop C4 forced Rook to d1, king to c8, knight to g8. Mm. I mean, what other thing to do? And why not? 
why not? And after bishop take, after rook a6, b3, bishop e6. And now again, let's have a look at this kind of position, which we're mm -hmm. expecting to happen actually on the board. What's going to happen if... Uh, First of all, first of all, the moves that you don't want to be making, I'm not that keen on moves like A4, mm. because after A4, looks great. Mm. It looks like it's locking up the rook, but unfortunately, after C4, it it's, looks awful. Mm. And uh, I'm, not, I'm also slightly concerned, let me, I'm also slightly concerned that this, <laughs> about this knight. So, mm. yeah, maybe even bishop d8 or something just to keep that knight trap so nope absolutely not so after a4 so after bishop e6 probably you need to be thinking about taking drastic measures aha the forcing lines continue because obviously you want to play knight takes bishop knight takes knight so instead you have to work out g4 okay mm. let's take let's throw in this one just for fun and now how to how to meet this I guess you have to go bishop takes knight and after pawn takes here gosh and now I guess you can't you have to stay unfortunately you have to stay on this diagonal yeah. sorry um, because if you go bishop takes bishop that would be a mistake because of <laughs> knight to d e7 check and then rook to d8 and that would be checkmate and that would be kind of unpleasant mm. so yep you got to stay on that diagonal and it takes a five so you need to move the bishop away where to move the bishop let's say kind of um kind of don't want to be putting it there. I mean, is there something even wrong with that? F6? Yeah, uh, yeah, F6. Yeah. <laughs> right, yep, you don't want to be, position. no, you don't want to be putting it there. So you, again, you need to hmm. keep the contact on the E7 square. So that hmm. means, okay, only move. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. And, uh, right. okay, and, and then, but, you know, why does the piece up? So after pawn hmm. takes, rook takes E6, and after king to g2, you have to go back to win it because you can't mm. let that knight live. And then, <laughs> how, many, yep. how many moves are we looking ahead now? Yeah, well, <laughs> but it's also weird. I mean, if, if you look at the developments that it, it's just like somebody walked by the board and knocked over all the pieces and put them back on the wrong squares. <laughs> I mean, it's, to it's a totally, totally different position suddenly. Very, very different. Yeah. Gosh. Mm. Gosh, gosh, gosh! Hang on a second. So let's, this is. Uh, but it's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's mm. let's kind of like replay this line again yeah. because are we looking like this so ten move deep force variation? Okay, so the knight came here. It would be great if we could yeah. see uh, exactly. what, what Sergei is thinking. Uh, yeah. If that was running, well, all the lines were running underneath the screen. Well, actually, if we had a conf well, yeah. if the players decide to use the confessional move, yeah. maybe we can find out what Jan is actually thinking yeah. knight f6 drop the mic and then <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay so we went through this kind of very long line mm. with bishop c4 and it looked like it was mm. this whole labyrinth of variations but it mm. turned out to be this long forcing line that at the end of it maybe equal <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay so is there any other move in this position? No, it doesn't look like you have to move the bishop. Yeah, because taking. Because, uh, well, I mean, you looked you're at not, taking, and that right, was. Right, you're not going to move the rook back. Not, I mean, not, yeah, I guess you could play that rook back, but. Yes, and and, and taking the knight is. But then it, that's not good, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you've allowed this beautiful move in for free, mm. and then after that, you probably got knight takes. You say, oh, I don't know. Is that looks that looks just. Blah. You don't mm. want that. So the most active, but this is, you know, this is, might be really difficult to spot because, you know, we have that kind of idea in chess. Mm. Long line, long think, wrong think, long line, wrong line. <laughs> so let's, so. Well, okay. there, and there are all kinds of side alleys. 
so, so it's, right. Uh, okay, so let's let's have it's a. It's not a straight line. This uh, this line. Well, it might be. It might be straight as an arrow. Like root to d1 check. Yes, but so Why many not? moments to go wrong. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, so let's let's run through the pitfalls. Mm -hmm. So king goes to c8, forced. Um, this looks this looks like the most forcing move after all. Attacks the rook and definitely the knight. Definitely look. Well, there's an awful number of threats, and it looks very. Uh, it's yeah, it looks, looks like looks something like you want to play. Okay, so let's. <laughs> mm. It's just because it's such a long line. Yeah. I have to kind of get my bearings right. Okay, so. Mm. You don't want to be going, so mm. you want to be going rook to a6 because, mm. yeah, you, you've got to put the rook on, on, on a good square and then mm. b3. After all, the bishop must maintain contact with the f7 pawn mm -hmm. and uh, bishop e6 looks good. And then the most forcing move on the board is to play g4. Yeah, just. Yeah, you know, destabilize the, the knight. Um, yeah. And then why not take take and then now. If you move the knight, that's it. It's curtains because mm. knight takes bishop will come with check and then be checkmate and that's mm -hmm. not good. Forced. So you have to go bishop takes knight. Pawn takes knight and then obviously you have to keep connection with the square on e7. So yeah, you I must go back to d8. But I think these are the moments that if, if, if you're calculating that it's you very difficult to say everything or to, to, to stay in control. I mean, for, for kayaking. Yeah, it, I mean, mm. but it is a pretty straightforward line. Mm. I mean, it, it is not in the, it's not that difficult in the sense that, you know, mm. there's lots of side variations, like you say. I mean, it seems like there's only one way out of yeah. this mess. And uh, okay, so pawn takes, and let's say then after the end of it, rook takes pawn. <laughs> yeah, but still you <laughs> this, have this to be little sure one is that, trapped. The, that, that the, the knight doesn't get out, and it doesn't. No, it doesn't get out. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the disadvantages of placing a white knight on yeah. g8. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, ah, I mean, so that's I, where there's always a black knight. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And mm. and you obviously don't want to put that knight. You don't want to rush with it. You want the the rook to the black mm. the black rook to go passive. So mm. then after king to g2, rook e8, and now we started. <laughs> on seven, move 17, we're now, this is why chess is so complicated. Yeah. And then after here, just to kind of, after knight h6, we kind of stopped here because it was getting a bit mind boggling. But so next time they ask you, Yovanka, how many moves do you calculate? Do you see ahead? Yeah, yeah. next time, you know, they yeah. ask me that, the, the general public, I'm going to say, yeah. well, you know, I see everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen me. <laughs> but I don't do opening theory. No. <laughs> that I don't do. No, no, actually, but, it's, I but it's not an emphasis. Uh, yeah. Task for kayaking. Okay. Wow, an exciting I, I, moment. Well, I'm, I'm really curious to hear his story afterwards. I mean, to what extent he he knew. I, I mean, it's it's these guys are so good and so well prepared. It's hard to imagine that he didn't know anything about this. That mm. or are we just attributing superhuman powers to them all the time? Well, maybe with reason. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting position and interesting forcing variation. So let's go back yeah. to the players and the board and see whether Sergei is actually going to well find this antidote to uh, Napomniachtchi's knight f6. So, um, mm. what do you think about this idea <laughs> that Olympia? Erkan suggests this is pay the players an extra 1,000 euros mm. for every game in which the Berlin defense has not been seen. Well, it's, it's a tough one because, well, actually, uh, as you were going down that line, that was pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, um, yeah, so it, is the Berlin, I mean, is it equal to a boring game? Um, well, sometimes it is, but maybe this. Well, we have to see how it how it develops, but f so far it's not. But yeah, I mean, so far, so far we've had a lot of fun with that long line. Uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, um, it's winning me over the Berlin defense, but generally, it's yes, it's a bit and nuanced and sophisticated. And maybe he also indicates that the suspicion is that we might end up in that equal position anyway, <laughs> after. Uh, 
<laughs> a lot of acrobatics. <laughs> but you know chess is a theoretical draw. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, hard, hard to say. I mean, I, I, I must say my heart doesn't leap if I see a, a game start with the Berlin. But, uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes they, I mean, we've also seen end game achievements in the Berlin that were pretty impressive. Yeah. And uh, I think for sure, if, if you're talking about, well, let's say amateur players, then chances that it will become a pretty tedious game are bigger than if you play a, a, a Sicilian or a King's Indian. But uh, you know something, I have mm. I have a theory when it comes to amateur players that mm. I, I think most of them are very good at attack. Mm -hmm. They're just not very good. Uh, it's just a uh, defensive defense is a problem, mm. and also positional measures yeah. because everyone doesn't like to study it they, they don't mm. like to study it they don't like to this is yeah. boring mm. and so and but attack that's something that everyone enjoys mm -hmm. they play through the attack attacking games yeah. and of course it's very easy just to go with the momentum go with your pieces forward but yeah. uh, when it comes to positional play sometimes it's calculation sometimes it's something mm. deeper and thinking about what your opponent wants yeah. and sometimes it's just uh, like looking at the position and just going well what is what does mm. is the position actually saying to me? Yeah. <laughs> Do what needs to be done. I mean, so many times I've uh, I've been playing in an open tournament, mm. and we've had a very normal position. Probably some would even call it dull. Yeah. And then from nowhere, here comes a, a G4 move or yeah. an H4 move, and I kind of like, whoa, what is that? And then suddenly that's been a weakness because they haven't been able yeah. to back it up. Mm. But uh, if you're just kind of take it easy. You know, and you just look at the position and say what needs to be done, what pieces need to be improved, mm. and don't impose your will on the board, then I think you can uh, actually gain quite a few mm. hundred rating points. Yeah. But to me, this looks more complicated than most night orbs. Then, uh yeah, the, this, but it, it is kind of a little bit one-dimensional because it's mm. all kind of like one, one move threat. So here you see one big threat, knight takes bishop. But then, let's say the the, the the line that you investigated, yeah, uh, it, it's that's pretty long. So chances that you, okay, yeah, as you as you prove, once once you play it, then uh, you probably find the solutions. But to do that in your head, that's almost, I, I I think that that requires a, a really high level. Yes, mm. yes, but uh, but don't underestimate. Mm. The power of the brain when it comes to forcing just yeah. one forcing line then it becomes mm. quite a lot more straightforward and I remember discussing this with John Spillman at an Olympiad mm. um, and he was telling me about some long 20 move variation that he'd calculated mm. and he said it was very very easy to do because it was just yeah. one move and it was just a very very straight line the mm. problems happen when mm. there's more than one way to capture pieces and, and mm -hmm then the, the mind goes a little bit foggy and then who knows what happens. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most I, I must say that if, if I think of some of the Armageddon games here, the, the, the wild attacks, I mean, I find those much, much easier to follow than, than, than this. Mm -hmm. or, or let's say to, 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 to look at this position and then think, okay, give me a verdict. Yeah. I mean, what's happening? And they, uh, very, very complicated. Yeah, this is uh, very, very complicated. Mm. And uh, if you haven't seen a move like Knight F6 before, then I imagine that you're in for a nasty shot. Yes, there's there's all, all kinds of subtleties in, in the line. I mean, they, oh, wait, that's mate. Oh, wait, you, you cannot go there because uh, then you lose a piece. And mm -hmm. No, no, in the end, that uh, Knight is lost. And, uh, and there's no way to give it back in a, in a favorable manner. So. Yes. Ah, so he's... Well, he hasn't played bishop. He takes on eight. He's ah, taken so on a two. So that's a new. That is well, a new well, move. Well, but well, you know, hang on a second. Isn't this like the Fisher? <laughs> this, I can't remember what color. You you probably know what colors they were. The Spassky Spassky Fisher. Fisher. Yeah, that was in the other side. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. And then b three. Automatically play it played. It's funny that you mentioned that one because I, I think that in the end it was. John Spielman, who I think he found a draw. I th they did work out a draw yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. And, yeah. And I think John was involved there. I think. But uh, mm. 
Uh huh. So now, well, now, now we have an issue here because uh, how is Sergei going to extract this lady from the A2 square? I mean, obviously you can't, you still can't go pawn takes knight because mm. uh oh, it's a rude awakening, yep. and uh, the knight, the rook is on prees on A6. H6, I'm, I'm also really bad at my coordinates. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah, this, uh -huh. this is very remarkable, this decision. Okay, so let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look. How, is, how can black get rid of this? Well, not rid of, save this bishop. Okay, so he's banking on a move like... I, I mean, uh, Yafanka, th th this is one that I can see one move deep. You take on A2, I play B3, and, and now what? <laughs> What's the plan? I, I don't know. Okay. Mm. Or maybe his mm. plan is okay. Maybe his mm. plan is rook takes knight. Hang on. This this is this is all a bit mysterious for me. Okay. So mm. if you, if you move the rook, I think is if you move the rook to g6 and then the knight comes to f7, the king has to go here. How on earth? Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> How on problems. earth will I not have a problems, headache at the problems. end of the day? Uh, mm. Okay, no, that that's a, that doesn't work. Okay, mm. so let's have a. So rook g6 is not good. Knight takes f7 is the huge threat. Um, well, in any case, he has played uh, b3. So. Oh, he has. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. immediately. Yes. I yes. mean, that was that didn't. Yeah. We, we, his, we all saw that. Yeah. He knows his <laughs> basket fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, if you ta grab that kind of pawn, we are going to yeah. trap the bishop. Okay, so, um, okay. What is the idea? Is his is, is idea simply to go see? F I mean, because I'm thinking that the idea is to go C4 or so uh, and try to... Yeah, you want to break up something there. Yeah, you want to break up something there, but it, can you... You don't want to lose your rook and everything in the process. You don't want to... Yeah, it's not... The, <laughs> it, the expression in English, I think, is something like uh, perform the operation but kill the patient. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, but that's what you, what, what you mean to say, is how can you leave all those issues uh, uh, okay, unattended uh, um, while you... Well, it, it should be connected to, to uh, C4, I guess. Right, but in, the in one, but one way or another. But I mean, if you go C4 immediately, then whoops, hmm. problems. Okay, king here, knight takes rook. It doesn't matter what knight you capture. This, this, this is... Uh, this is not good. Um, uh, just, just everything is falling apart. I mean, can is he banking on this? No, because knight takes knight is in the air. So you have to take that, and then uh, just at the very least, knight to d5, g4 is coming. Uh, it's it's mm. a disaster. You can't. So you can't. Do, you can't allow that. Um, and, uh, and if you move the rook, to, so not there, so if you move the rook to g6, knight takes f7 check, king goes to c8, and the move that I'm thinking about is I kind of also want to play knight h8. Uh, you've lost your faith in the knight g8. A <laughs> uh, knight g8, knight, yeah, and, and I wanted to attack the rook. <laughs> <laughs> Simple chess. Because then this force is this, but how is this? But here, let's say, w what white wants to achieve is to have a situation where this. he can simply play rook a1, and that was the end of the bishop. So, mm -hmm. black is in a hurry. Yeah. That but uh, but uh, the big problem mm -hmm. is that when we take a look at this position, mm -hmm. 
Black has uh, two urgent missions. You know, mm -hmm. first of all, to save this guy, yeah. which I don't even think that is the immediate mission. Mm -hmm. The first mission is actually to deal with Knight takes F7, Jack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because then the diagonal has been interrupted by exactly. A3. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have to deal with that, unfortunately. You, you know, you have so no fact, time. We're looking at taking on A2 and B3 and, and Black creating two additional problems for himself. Yeah. And what has he as composition or what is there for him? What is there for him? Mm -hmm. I, I don't see what there's. <laughs> I don't see. <laughs> I just don't see it. Um, well, you, you would think, okay, maybe he well, you can't can, say can take the knight at some point, but, but not, not now. Maybe the idea is to kind mm -hmm. of like, but I mean, does this make a difference if you go here? Mm -hmm. okay, because you can't defend this pawn on f7. The knight takes f7, because why mm -hmm. not? After rook takes knight is his idea, pawn takes, bishop takes, and then he's trying to say, hey, I have some, some pawns to offset this. Well, and you cannot go to a1 for the moment. No, I can't um, go to a1 and trap the. But uh, and that trap diagonal this, can this easily be interrupted by the knight or the bishop. Yeah. Yep, I mean, yeah. this is the kind of move that I would be thinking about playing. But okay, you'd have to think about c4. So yeah. the move, the move that you'd have to calculate, always calculate the checks, the captures, and the attacks. Mm. Ba bam! So you'd have to capture the. Hmm. And this is also quite standard in the Berlin. So pawn takes, pawn takes, the knight has to move. The knight will move this way. And now what? Hmm. But I mean, this guy is still, for the time being, and this is how threatened. So maybe, so maybe this is uh, Sergei's plan to play he, king c8. He, he, play he has played king, king c8. c8. Yep. So this is his plan, and his whole plan is after knight takes pawn, rook takes knight, and he is skirting on the edge of disaster, but he mm. might get away with it. So okay, so pawn takes rook. Bishop takes pawn, and then what is the kind of the simplest move that's going to most practical? Well, he's taken on f7, right? Mm. Yeah, he's so taken on f7. So yep. now there's. So well, we're expecting, we're definitely expecting knight, ta rook takes knight. Ah, uh, not, not to g6. So. Mm? Oh, if you go to g6, then I think you're going to have problems with. The second mission. Yeah. And uh, well, maybe maybe he might go. Maybe he might do this. Maybe rook. So you think taking on f6 and? Oh, he has played rook g6. Okay. 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 But th this guy will be a problem. <laughs> I can. <s> <laughs> I can <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to see this. This is going to be problematic. Okay, so now you have to be. Quite okay, so the knight on f6 is mm. on, on prees, so it needs to move. Um, you don't really want to be putting on g8. Yeah. Do you want to capture pawns? Yes, maybe. Mm -hmm. But then this allows c4. So, not. Okay, so if you, if you move the knight back to d5, and then the c4 comes on the board well you don't have g4 now which that, well at least that's something but no okay but isn't hang on wait one second but if, if don't you have this sorry i was just looking at this rook on uh, this look rook on mm. uh, g6 and then after pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn yeah i think if black can play mm -hmm. c4 that's a big one oh. yeah, yeah. oh maybe but maybe this is not so clear maybe let's mm. okay knight goes to but here you were you were also looking at 
Knight A H, right? A, uh, uh, Knight H eight. So here I was looking. Yeah, Knight H eight. Another attacking move. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I forgot about that. Okay, Knight H eight, and now you have to go here, and now pawn takes, and now here, and now here I wanted just to go here. Mm -hmm. Bishop E five killed game. Mm -hmm. And now is this going yeah, to that, be? That looks nice. It looks nice, doesn't it? The knight comes here. But it's uh huh. But and uh, bishop takes, bishop pawn takes. It's a race. No, you're not rescuing this. Hang on, you can just go here, here. Okay, one. <laughs> And then we'll have this situation, yeah. and it'll be like, <laughs> <All right. laughs> like has just one task, and uh, but right. uh, okay, the rook should hold off those four pawns. Uh, yes, that's <laughs> that looks pretty hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> let's just let, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say that the, the rook will hold off with good play. <laughs> it yeah, is. Yeah, and the, I mean the, they yeah, are scattered the knight all H, over knight the place. H8. That should. Yeah. I, I like knight h eight. It's the most simple move. Is mm. there anything else to do apart from? I think you have to go rook takes knight. Rook takes knight. Okay, rook takes knight, pawn takes. Mm. And yeah, you have to go bishop takes pawn. Because if mm. you go pawn takes pawn, unfortunately, <gasps> you're going to get into trouble with g4. Mm. And that's not going to be great. So, mm. yeah. Wow, so we, we are actually looking at seeing a decisive result today. It looks like it. looks it. that way. Always, so always the same with these Berlins. Yeah. <laughs> decisive <laughs> games. Decisive games, <laughs> these yeah. long forcing <laughs> variations, <laughs> people yeah. not remembering or understanding the theory. Yes, yes, yes. So no, but it looks but, uh, like but you, you lost. Get, you get the feeling that this taking on A2, I mean, that, that was... Taking on A2. Going a bit too close to the precipice, But maybe, right? you know, maybe, you know, Maybe you were right. So when it came back mm. to this position, maybe you were right. You know, bishop c4 was just way too long and mm. too complex for just yeah, people to probably. to yeah. understand and just see at the end of it that white's knight saddled there on g8. Mm. Obviously, you know, it's much easier when we have the board and we're able to play out those moves one yeah. by one. So maybe I was a little bit dismissive of the <laughs> of your concern. I'm sorry. Mm. You were right. Why? Bishop B, B, B3. It, I think in these situations, it's 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 very difficult to say if you underestimate or overestimate their uh, calculation skills, because it's. I mean, we know that they are amazing, but even there, there are limits sometimes, mm, and yeah. uh, especially uh, how you visualize things. And for, for instance, the, the, these uh, bishop captures at the end. Yeah. Those I find very difficult to visualize because, in fact, they are the wrong way around or something. Yeah. And then you can say, well, but it's it's mate, you know, if you if you if you take. But then, okay. Yeah. The, the moves that I find quite difficult mm -hmm. to visualize mm -hmm. actually are those. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, it's those uh, bishop moves that when they retreat, when they go back, you know, the bishop's mm -hmm. on an awesome diagonal, and then the bishop retreats, and the same with the queen, mm -hmm. goes backwards just to go to the other side of the board yeah. and you think oh yeah didn't <laughs> see that yeah uh, especially you should note these things um when you're playing with a bishop pair mm -hmm. two 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 are better than one yeah as uh, they, we like to say okay so rook and these are always the moments where the people at home say oh didn't, didn't he say that <laughs> <laughs> no he <Yeah>. didn't <laughs> mostly he does but <laughs> not this time. Yeah, no, so. I mean, mm. I, I mean, this is this is one of the sad things about chess: the yeah. fact that the computers are so strong. I mean, yeah. I was, I was reading through mm. some old historical books, and I was mm. like, wow, these are very strong players in the fifties and sixties. They didn't defend very well. No. And uh, and when did they analyze? They didn't analyze. <laughs> 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 well, but everyone would admire them and everyone was yeah. like, wow, this is amazing. And it's like mm. the, the standard has increased so much. Yeah, no, that's uh, definitely true. 
I, but, I, but it also, well, we lost something that you had these months-long discussions about. On, on the board. On the board, we are, we are, the crystal ball is oh. out and we are predicting some of the moves. But I think mm. knight h8 was the simplest and now after bishop e5 I think is the most human move. Mm -hmm. Bishop e5, because otherwise if black gets to play knight to d4 or mm. even maybe c4 then it becomes a little bit messy. Mm. So, so I have to think of some new chess aphorism like knight in the corner and then something oh <laughs> we were, when i was doing the champ when we we're doing the champions chess or knight they, they did think yeah. of uh, yeah knight in the corner mm. but i can't remember what it is because <laughs> uh i uh but they did they did come up with some great mm. because i was going knight on the edge mm. fall off the hatch knight on the rim dim yeah we mm. have lots of uh Lots of cool chess expressions. Yeah. Do you have any in, in Dutch? Yes, uh, I think they, well, man, many of them, well, they, they come from the classics, but in, in the, yeah, we have, we have certain ones, but many of them are translations. Okay. Or just, yeah, very colloquial ones that uh, any club player can think of. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, What's your favorite chess expression? That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really put me on the spot there. <laughs> favorite chess expression. My my favorite one. Mm. I have to have to mm. say, I I got it from David Howell. Mm. Is a uh, a knight is a king's best friend. Okay. <laughs> 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 and and when you think about it, actually, yeah, you save nice. a lot of games. So we know this is a recurring pattern on the tour. Yeah, yeah. If a player had a knight beside their king, yeah. it's difficult to checkmate. So Shakespearean. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you won't mm. find us quoting Shakespeare on the tour. <laughs> not yet. Not well, yet. Except on maybe to take, mm. well, kind of like paraphrasing to be or not to be. To take or not to take. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is well, the that's question. Yeah, that's definitely a good one. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So what, uh, turn. what does this boil down to? Um, I mean the, situ the, the the position that we got now. Yeah. Well, bishop takes. Well, because I'm kind of fixated by this bishop move. I, I don't see any other good alternative. Mm. I, I feel that this is the kind of move you, you really want to be playing, just to ask questions to the bishop. Of course, bishop takes mm. bishop isn't really possible because whoops, the knight and the rook are under attack so that's not going to be helping matters and uh well <laughs> might be the only move and if i'm in and i'm just looking at trying to get get out this guy mm -hmm. and uh after bishop takes bishop pawn takes bishop i guess you aren't really going to play Pawn takes pawn, kind of gets it out, get, gets out the bishop, and maybe mm. this is a bit, this is a bit messy actually, maybe, because suddenly this bishop is out, and these pawns are just going to be very fast. So in which yeah. case, maybe things aren't as simple as I, I'm saying. So in which case, you need to keep that bishop trapped. Can you also, yeah, can you keep a trap like that? Yeah, but then, then c3 happens. And then and then you try to win this pawn. Ah, but then this, but, this yeah. nicely controls. Yes, okay. So, but, but if you go to a1 anyway and... and if you go to a... Start. Yeah, if you go to a1, I kind of... Yeah, you could... But uh, then this is... That's not it. That's not a good plan. Apparently. No, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Mm -hmm. S so maybe this isn't so simple. Mm -hmm. But here, here, but here, I've just uh, I've noticed that what I want to do is I kind of want to initiate the race because everything is quite nicely centered here. And how to do that? So, 
because knight to d4 is coming followed by knight takes c2 and maybe it's not so easy I'm sure the computer will have some ideas as to how mm. to bishop e5 okay so if, if bishop e5 isn't so easy I mean what what else to do it looks so logical, doesn't it? It does look. I know. Yeah. It looks. It looks block the bishop, and uh, but this is is the move. This is the move that's kind of worrying for me. And then you again. It makes sense to capture this. I like b4, the c3, get this one out. And you know, knight, knight, to, G, knight to d4 is in the air, so what's the answer to that? Is, if you have a good answer to that, then everything is fine. You get the idea that black has a lot of activity suddenly, and then and, and white is not really. Mm nicely co coordinated in any manner yeah yeah so 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 this you white has to have an answer to this to this mm. move but what is the answer so I mean Rick so what's the plan of the knight in the corner where oh you want to get it out yeah we can get that out but then what's the, your what's, yeah, what's your, the future what's the future of it, of it after yeah. you come to knight to d4 mm. we can figure maybe we can figure this out ah well, maybe Ooh, maybe well this is probably not what you want right hmm? suddenly those uh, the knight oh, wait and the one bishop second day. wait one second it could be this the king comes here and you go mm. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> that was the problem. That was the troublesome piece, and yeah. gone. Okay, hang on. And then if you come here, well, unfortunately, my friend, there is back rank issues. After knight takes knight, rook goes to e8. Yeah, but you. Uh, so, okay. But you could go back to e6, huh? Mm. Okay. So yeah, you can go to e6, but um, I'm still going to torture you some more with some back rank yeah, issues. that's not very kind. No. No, <laughs> no, no. The no. chess is never about being kind. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, mm. so your idea was... Oh gosh, but, but uh, that's deep. <laughs> that's, de that's very deep. So knight g6 with the idea of coming... Oh, so what did he play? Oh, he's made a move. Uh, he yes. Okay, so he's actually yep. put his bishop on e5. Yep. Okay. Yeah, let him answer our questions. Okay. I think c4 has to be played. Mm. But okay, I, I think c4, 100%, it's going to mm. happen on the board. Otherwise, white will simply play bishop, takes mm. bishop, collects the, rook on, the bishop on a2, yep. happy days. And then... Bishop takes, bishop, pawn takes, and then just by process of elimination, <laughs> which I realize, you know, if we had been playing an actual game, maybe we wouldn't even thought about these moves. No. So we don't like this, because after here... Yeah, but I, th I think we, we've seen so many positions that these, uh, these we, guys we are going to start by running. elimination. Yeah, this is... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I, I think black is probably doing okay, and it's mm. going to be a race, and mm. I, I think black is pretty yeah. okay there yeah and so so not that obviously you can't allow c takes b3 so that move and the only way to escape to, to release this bishop from the cage is to go c3 mm -hmm. forced and now the big problem is knight to d4 So you're not going to be going g4 or anything because that's just encouraging the move. So you need to have an idea to meet it. Rook d1 kind of looks a little bit passive. Mm. But maybe, maybe it's okay because then you're going to go to rook to d3. 
and try to win this pawn. I know I would. I would try to <laughs> win that pawn as quickly as I yeah. could. Yeah. <laughs> before, before you lose your pawn exactly. on C2. Exactly. So that's what I would be doing. Yeah. So the rook D1 is also okay. Um, any mm. And then you came up with this idea. You said you don't like your knight in the corner, so you came up there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, but you just play this. Mm, yeah, that's... And then... As long as the king doesn't have any Luft, then uh, yeah. this is so tricky. <laughs> and then, yeah, obviously here is not yeah. going to be great because... Oh, but maybe this is... Maybe even this is okay because then you come back. Hmm. So, yeah, then you, then you come back and then you ask questions. So this is okay as well. Hmm. As long as you win this, this pawn, then white is going to be doing well. Okay, nervy stuff here because uh, both sides have to mm. suddenly, suddenly navigate some uh, murky waters. It doesn't look as easy as I thought it was. Oh, and let's say Nepomniachi has played rather quickly. Mm -hmm. he, uh, it looks like he's uh, in control. Yeah. If he wins this one, it's. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good one. It is so a good one because yeah. it takes him up to. If he wins this one in the in the classical game, then he will of course go to seven points. Yep. Magnus Carlsen's on six. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Small <laughs> details. <laughs> That's and another way of torturing someone. <laughs> just being yeah. ahead of him. Being ahead of them on yeah. on the scoreboard, mm. yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah. So talking about, cal because we've seen a lot of lines here and we've had to mm. calculate a lot. I mean, what's the most impressive feat of calculation that you've seen? Mm. Sometimes it, 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 I think it, it has to do with this visualization. Um, one, well, one thing that comes to mind is uh, at, at some point, um, Jan Timon, he had published uh, a study in New in Chess and uh, well let's say for me it's not very easy to start to, to solve a study mm -hmm. from my head and and at some point um, Boris Gelfand he sent me a message and he says well there there was something something missing in one line and he uh, I said oh that's interesting well maybe you can write a letter and so he said hey, write a letter and we were at a tournament in Dortmund and we're going for dinner with uh, uh, Boris and with Vladimir Kramnik and at some point, uh, Gelfand says, did you get the letter? I say, yeah. And Vladimir says, what was the letter about? I say, no, it's, it's, it's about a study. Like, I think it's totally irrelevant mm -hmm. to even tell. He says, yeah, but what, what, what? And then Boris, of course, understands that how good Vladimir mm -hmm. is. And he says, well, it was this position. And he gives the position. And he's walking in the street and he says, ah, Queen B1. Yeah, yeah, Queen B1. And I, I thought that was totally amazing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was not on, not only that he solved it, but he he, he, he spotted the, the the well the slight mistake that there yes. was there. And the, that's uh, impressive. Yeah. yeah. That uh, mm. yeah, mm. I must say, mm. I, I'm very bad. Well, I, I like mm. started solving studies, and I'm very mm. good at finding the first answer. I'm not so good at mm. finding that nuance on yeah, but some of them are so <laughs> incredibly deep the defensive nuance there's always yeah. you know i find the right answer i find yeah. the right idea and then i'm like yep got it and then they're like yeah. yes 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 this is the move oh okay wait one second we have some moves because bishop takes bishop has been played and uh, let's okay well i was so sure of myself the mm -hmm. c4 was going to be the only move well, plays but okay here we have knight to d4 and now the greedy part of me is just going take the pawn schnapp the pawn why not yeah let's go okay so presumably b6 and then And then just attack, attack the knight. Ah, oh, but then you, you go c5. Hmm? Can you go c5? Or? Yes, you can go c5. And the idea remains. Then I might have trapped my own rook. 
it's, it's a very funny situation, isn't it? Yeah. I might have trapped my own brook, but oh, okay, it's but all in a good cause. Okay, so. Um, okay, but how? Um, this is a very funny situation. I mean, it's so what can white do? I mean, so the plan is simply to go bishop b1 and pick up the pawn and pick up the other one? Yes, it's that easy. Um, mm. Yeah, maybe... Something else. But, but if, you go, if you go there, then maybe I can go rook a4, actually. Okay. So, uh, okay, and then I'm, then I'm just... So you go bishop here, and then... Yeah, but there will be some other... I'm thinking... Casualties as well, yeah, yeah. Thinking you go c3. Yeah. And then... Take, and then, okay, the other one, a7, and... Mm, and then, then, of course, rook a7 is hanging, and I've managed to keep my pawns intact, and, of course... And of course, um, white's superior. superior it, this should be better for yeah, white. Yeah, exactly. White's yeah. pawn advantage on this side. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I understand David now with the arrows. So, should <laughs> be supreme here. So, yeah, and if c3, then okay, knight here, but then you would come in with the king. Um, oh, it's on the board. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, we're. Definitely expecting b6. See so how many times I say definitely can be expecting, and, <laughs> and it doesn't happen. Yeah. So where does the rook go? Because okay, he can go. He can go bishop b1, but that kind of feels a bit nah. Well, but he's, he's played b6, right? Oh, he's yes, yeah. he's played b6. Okay, yeah. yeah. And now, the reason I wanted to put my rook on mm -hmm. c4 is because I didn't want the knight to capture the pawn. But okay, what happens if? What happens if he goes full in, full in for the race? He just takes... I, I, I suspect white is just too slow with these pawns. So... Yeah, this is a serious counterplay for uh, black, right? Right, I mean, if you go here, I mean... Mm. Yeah, and I mean, it's just going to walk this pawn. I mean, in fact, it has... This is, look at the bishop and the knight. They're kind of mm. set up perfectly to escort the A pawn to its destination. So you don't want that. Yeah, that A pawn, you, no. you, you might have to watch out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mm -hmm. mean, it's so quick as well. Yeah. So there's no, no, you can't do that. So you have to. So my instinct was, of course, to preserve this very important C2 pawn. Mm. So I wanted to go. With, and then you pointed out <laughs> the C5. <laughs> <laughs> Traps in. And I, I kind of momentarily panicked. And I thought, mm. oh dear. And then, uh, then I kept calm and saw that the rook a4 is hmm. okay so still looking good still looking good for Nepomniachtchi and if he, yep. if he handles this then we will see a decisive result for him but okay still lots of pitfalls and tricks well probably he has to be very very precise okay he has played rook c4 yep. and uh, we are expecting c5 but uh, maybe, I mean, what else to do? No, I mean, it's forced. It's, for, it's forced because you, you, have so, to defend yeah. the, you have to defend the knight. So, yeah, interesting. I, I would never, ever have guessed if you told me, no. <laughs> if you told me before the <laughs> game has started yeah. that uh, this one might be a decisive result, I was like, mm, no, no, no. maybe after four hours. I also <laughs> must say that, uh, I fully understand the, 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 the tweet about the Berlin, and I, I largely agree. But uh, I think we're treated to a very interesting game. It's, uh, I mean, there's so many twists and turns, and uh, I mean, I mentioned this, this, this idea that somebody knocked over the pieces and they put it randomly back, but, but I think this, it, it looks a bit like the, the, the pieces have been knocked over four times, and uh, oh, we, we're in a completely different situation again. Yeah. yeah. No, I definitely. Okay, 
C5, your move yep. on the board, Doug. I'm sorry, yeah. I've kind of given you the, the horrible task of defending Black's position, yeah. but you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> you oh found, yeah, you found this knight g6 idea, which I'm very... <laughs> I was trying to tell him that he should play that on the first move, C5, but he, he decided to postpone it. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it has to, has to appear one, yeah. one stage on the board. So, mm. so you, you're, what would you describe your style when it comes to playing chess? Uh, very messy. Messy? No. <laughs> I think it would be, uh, yeah, we, I don't think, think we should spend uh, time on that. <laughs> I don't have any, any claims. Moving along. No, no, I don't have any claims. No, no, but it's interesting. I mean, mm. okay, rook a4 on the board. Gosh. I think in general it's, it's easier to, to calculate attacking games, as you say. Yeah. And um, you see very often that the real master, uh, the, the, the mastership is, is, is shown in, 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 in subtleties, positional uh, yeah. understanding. And, and sacrifice, mm. actually. That's, yes. That's something. Well, or defending against sacrifice. I, yeah. I think when I was a junior player, one, uh, one book that I enjoyed an awful lot was The Art of Sacrifice by Vukovic. Yes, yes. And especially because suddenly you realize that every bishop h7 doesn't win. Mm -hmm. no, 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 you can go to g6 with your king. And, yes, and, yeah. and, and I thought that was very, those were revelations and that um, you learned a lot from that. Yeah. Um, one secret I learned about uh, attacking mm -hmm. players Okay, so look, mm. it's, it's like the players have been following our analysis. Yeah. I, always, I always really enjoy that moment when it happens, but I also sometimes get worried for the players because I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, no, I agree with you when it comes mm. to attack. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. But sacrificing, unless you've kind of been brought up mm. with, this kind of, with this kind of attacking books and you've kind of seen those type of games, yeah. It can be difficult to shake that mentality that your pieces are <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your pieces are there to be sacrificed and it's all about opening lines and uh, mm. seizing the momentum and I, I find sacrificing a piece or, mm. or even pawns for mm. domination, spatial or just long-term compensation that is something that uh, I tend to feel very stressed. And I actually, mm. I, I was reading the positional decision making by Gelfand, where he was saying the same oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a little bit nerve wracking. So C3, okay, so he's actually but I think retreated that, that's the That's actually the great thing about chess that you, um, let's say you, you, you can grow in so many manners mm -hmm. and also your, your tastes can, uh, I mean, you get so many acquired tastes that suddenly you understand something deeper yeah and it's it's just like well let's say if you, with classical music you start out with a, a symphony and then in the end you start to appreciate string quartets and, and it's it's with with uh with chess as well i mean it's it's the easiest thing is the open games and the attacks mm -hmm. and then suddenly you, you discover that there's other things and uh, yeah i was uh mm. i was listening oh what happened there Sorry, I was just looking at the player cameras and I was suddenly... Something with the thermos up. It looked like a... He needs a drink. Nepomniachtchi yeah. was not so happy with something. Well, he likes to pull faces, that's... Uh, yeah. I think he, he's, he's done that from when he was a junior, always uh, pulling mm -hmm. lots of faces. This is a... Mm. Yeah, it is. Sometimes you see mm. this with uh, you see this a lot with Eastern Europeans, mm. grandmasters, yeah. that they're very expressive. Yeah, you can tell when they think they've blundered, and you know they. Mm. You can tell when they're focused, and you can tell when they're mm. in for the kill. I don't find it so much with uh, um, grandmasters from China. Say, for, say for instance, oh. they do look very calm. Yeah, and, they uh, do. Again, also grandmasters from India, very, very calm disposition, mm. just uh, pure focus and can't tell whether they're winning or losing. Yeah, you even get the idea with Chinese players that, okay, that's not what you do. You know, it's, that's just bad behavior or... Maybe, you know, yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, I was discussing it with uh, one of my old coaches yeah. and he was saying that he think it's the kind of mm. whole meditation comes from mm -hmm. the, the East. And you know, that Having place, control over exactly yourself. Control, control over your emotions and just being logical and objective and yep. not being so emotional. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and this is one of the best things you can be when you're playing chess. 
yeah. unemotional. And uh, the, the the famous poker face, the, the, the faces that you cannot read. Right. Um, yeah, that, that definitely goes for uh, many of the Chinese players. Mm -hmm. that you have no idea. So we do have a move. Uh, the knight went back to retreat the pawn, and mm. uh, I guess it's our turn to figure out ah. how to put the boot in, how to make sure that white preserves his advantage. Because, I mean, yes, I think this is winning for white, but on the other hand, I can see situations where it goes wrong. For instance, if the bishop gets to c2 mm -hmm. and uh, white is forced to go rook a3 or something. So, I mean, there is problems with the b3 pawn. Oops, that was not the move I wanted to play. Mm. So, how to... Maybe, I mean, so you make a move like, I, I still think there's uh, pit bulls here because I mean, if mm. you make a random move like, so the moves that kind of spring to mind are G4, <laughs> because you know, it's the <laughs> Berlin, <laughs> you have I, to get it in at some I point. I think it, it would only be fair if at some point G4 will, will come. And right, um, so G4. You deserved it. And yeah, and also mm. you kind of also want to get the mm. the pawn race in operation, yeah. and. Uh, but maybe you, you first want to eliminate the uh, h5 pawn, and then that runs even easier. You, you mean run with the rook? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just wondering how vulnerable the white pawns are on the queen side. I mean, how yeah. much should white worry about those? Um, so play a safe move would be like here, but ah. Well, that yeah, that looks like a very logical move, right? Yeah. Oh, he actually we have some moves. He's actually put his knight on f7. Okay. Uh huh. So whilst it, so again, I was also considering that improving the, the knight, you know, because when you're unsure of what to do, you improve your worst <laughs> place piece and that knight on yep. h8. Okay, so but then this this one kind of confused me a little bit. So rook a3. And now defending the pawn and knight a5 unfortunately is not going to do anything because you just get b4 and that solved nothing and so there's just yeah there's no follow-up right? no um, there's no follow-up unfortunately b5 no. is coming so no. you can't you can't go immediately in mm. for the kill there so then uh, the only thing that, that i can that see is like bring the king <laughs> <laughs> improve your worst place piece. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you feel what is the that mighty rook doing? So it's only defending the b3 pawn. That's. So wait one second. Yeah, maybe I kind mm -hmm. of. I was like, maybe I'm thinking about playing a5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because whilst this rook stands on the great square of a3, yeah, you this want bishop to make cancels that, it out. Yeah. yeah, you want to make that rook look stupid. And but unfortunately, it might be all about these guys. How quick they are. Yeah. Okay, so what to do? And uh, what to do? It's not so. Well, at least he's given. Nepomniachi is something to chew on. Knight uh, d2, this is kind of the stuff that I would be thinking about doing. Bring the king in. Yeah, that's funny. I was, I suddenly, the, both kings get very active, <laughs> come yeah. running to the rescue. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, well, let me do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Mm. So. But still, it's just not. E it's. Are you gonna keep it? I'm thinking if you make a move like this, then b5 mm. is going to be a problem. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why I'm thinking. <clears throat> maybe I've got you know. 
And then after knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, king e6. Then uh, again, oh, not easy. No, white's not so happy. Here. No, so obviously that is not not the ideal mm. way forward. But okay. You think that's maybe what Kayakin achieved, that he... Okay, uh, oh, I actually have a move, sorry. So uh, mm. Nepomniach has answered our question for us. Aha, so he goes knight d6, and after king moves to c7, now his whole idea is to go and plant his knight on b5. Calm. Calm and collected. <laughs> so there's not going to be any b5 ideas, because that was a bit bothersome. Oh! Oh, okay. Knight c4 played instead. Knight c4. Okay, and b5 is uh, still not possible. But now I'm thinking, <laughs> what happens if the king, like, I'm inspired by your say, your words, the king comes to the rescue. So there's only <laughs> one plan for black here, and that's actually to push b5. So the king goes, is planning to go to a6, then b5. Mm. Yep. Ta -da! We get that in, but I, even then I'm still not so sure. Okay, so... Knight c4, king b7. Okay, maybe he wants to go knight d3. c4. Maybe. Ah. Knight to d4. And uh, this rook in a3 is not having the easiest of times. Mm. So, my conclusion is still not easy. No, 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 not no, at all. not not easy at all. And, and uh, well, what I find find fascinating is that in fact all the well, many of the characteristics have entirely changed suddenly mm -hmm. again. So the, well, they're both looking for a regrouping of their pieces. Uh, well, to to adjust to the new situation. So, mm -hmm. so, so what's the? So okay. Well. Knight a7. Uh -huh. Knight a7 with the idea of going knight b5. But, what about knight e3? That's the move yep. I wanted, knight e3. Because in the other line that I was kind of like king b7, yep. <coughs> the king takes six, get the pawn to b5. Yep. Um, in that line, I, I was trying to do knight e3, and then when the bishop moved to some random square, mm. c4, but then the knight was jumping to d4. Yeah. So let's kind of now use the logic there and play knight e3, and then once the bishop moves out of the way, somewhere, anywhere, difficult to su suggest a move, then I was thinking c4. Mm -hmm. But I... David would not be very happy with me if I pushed my pawn to c4. Is that forbidden? Um, yeah, it is, he's really hesitant about pushing pawns. Mm. And that's something I always have to remember. Mm. You have to be calm and you have to be patient. And he would be like, he would probably be saying to me, hang on a second, those pawns control a lot of squares. And you push this pawn up, then you've conceded mm. the d4 square and the b4 mm -hmm. square. Yep. Why are you doing that? Yes, Yobi. No, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> makes a lot of sense, yeah, right? Yeah. So this this is. Uh, yeah. So you've learned from your impatience. I, I, I have um, learned. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, still, the instinct <laughs> well, is there. Well, no, no, no. It's it's not because it's your first impulse. Yeah, my um, impulse is to yeah, go. To yeah. go I think oh, oh, wait, wait, wait! Not push. Let okay. Push. Oh, hang on a second. We do have some moves. Mm. So we've got ninety three mm. bishop h seven, and uh, if you don't want to push the pawns. This, this pawn. Mm. You don't want to push it to c4 and concede the and concede the mm. d4 and the b4 square. Mm -hmm. Then you absolutely need to move the rook because knight to b5 yep. is happening. Mm -hmm. So going to move the rook. A2, A4, A1. Which one do you choose? <laughs> 
Uh, I'm also thinking what what uh, what the white knight would he use? Yeah, but knight 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 b5 is coming. Yeah, yeah. Knight b5 would attack the c3 pawn, so you absolutely need to deal with that. Yeah, there is nothing really dangerous you can do with the knight. I mean, to to give up yeah. a pawn in. So you're either looking at pushing one of these pawns, mm. see if c4 is possible. The rook is eyeing up the knight, so even oh. b4 is possible. Maybe but maybe he goes here and then, uh, any then uh, hang on, hang, how do, hang, hang on a second. <laughs> how does that oh. work? Hang on. So oh, no, you knight go, go here and you go here and then the knight no, comes back. No, no, you go, you go to b3. And hmm? Don't you go to b3? No, if I go to b3, then suddenly this oh, happens. Ah, and, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 yeah, that's... The pass pawn is a prisoner. You must <laughs> keep it under lock and key. Absolutely. <laughs> that's the <all. laughs> one. So the rig must go to, to yeah. a1. And I don't want to put it in a light square because then it will get attacked by the, the bishop. I'm, I'm so just curious if it ever was... Trans I, I mean, I, I like it. It's uh, keep it under lock and key. Yeah. I think I want to check the, the original and uh, yeah. It, it, I've heard it's meant to be really mm. funny actually. I think I heard Nimsovich. that Nimsovich was actually meant to be a better writer in German than, than what they've translated it into. Yeah, he, he, he made up all kinds of words. Then, uh, oh, did he? He was very creative. So yeah. was he the Lewis Carroll of uh, the German? Well, I think, <laughs> Danish I think you'll have, No, no, I think you'll have more fun reading Lewis Carroll. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, definitely. Okay. Uh, but it's, well, I'm not sure if, if what you can learn from Nimsovich, but I had a great time once uh, going through the, uh, the tournament book of Karlsvart uh, 29, which is his big success. And then you, you just put yourself in his shoes, and, and it's a fantastic ride because he wins all those wonderful games. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, this is really his best tournament ever. Mm. But, but his my system... Um, that's that's an acquired taste. And, um, Doug, we've stumbled upon a good move actually with b4. Uh -huh. I, I would get a uh, white can play b4. So bishop h7 played, and uh -huh. b4 is in fact oh. possible. Oh wow! Yeah, because if you move back knight to b5, mm -hmm. the rook will go to a1. You know, keep an eye on the passport. Oh, okay. And then the whole point is that, say. Okay, say you take, that's easily dealt with mm -hmm. by the fact that you just take here, okay. one takes, rook takes, easy, mm -hmm. easy, you can control, you can easily guard, uh, come to the aid of, you can easily come to defense yep. of this pass pawn, that's not a, that, that's not a thing because the white king will come and join in the game and then eventually it will be all about those pawns on the king side. I was going to say on the right there, but uh, that's his habit. Hmm. And, uh, <laughs> Okay, so that's possible. So knight takes c3 easily dealt with, and then mm. after pawn takes or c takes or mm. okay, so you take this way, take this yep. way, can't step forward with the pawn, mm -hmm. and then he goes here. Check. Very nice. Very nice. Well. Oh. And this can be calculated. But it, it's such a difficult, it, it might be a bit of a weird move to see actually, but it's the consequence of knight a7. But at the same time, it's probably for them one of the first moves they look at, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. maybe. I mean, you, this, you want to test this. You want right, to, I mean, uh, my instinct was actually suppose just... Suppose this works. Yeah, so right. My, um, well, my instinct was move, whoops, hmm. not that move. My instinct was move the rook because I was like, oh, yeah. knight b5, the problem must be dealt. Yeah. But in actual fact, hmm. and it was only because I was telling you, well, if you're going to move the pawns, look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, hang on a second. No, no it's all thanks to we've, David. No. We've, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, well, hmm. potential critical moment on the board. <laughs> and uh, we'll probably take a short break and uh, we'll see you after the break. Welcome to today's Kitchen Table Talk. We're so lucky we have with us the arbiters at the Norway Chess Tournament. And Anamon from France 
It's your seventh time at Norwich S. Uh, how do you like being here and what is different this time, especially now during the pandemic? Yes, it's my seventh time as chief arbiter of uh, Norwich S. And it's still a pleasure to be here as a chief arbiter. And um, it's so different because uh, it's an innovative format with classical games and Armageddon if the game ends in a draw. And uh, I really enjoy the atmosphere of the tournament and the city of uh, Stavanger. And um, we can say with coronavirus, um, we have new duties as an arbiter because we need to clean tables, chairs, pieces, clocks after each round and also between the classical games and Armageddon. Yeah, so you have a lot of extra work this time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and Anastasia, it's your second time here. What is it like being back? And uh, what are you most looking forward to the next couple of weeks? Uh, first of all, of course, I'm very happy to be back in Norway and the uh, weather is just perfect and I'm sure that uh, we will have a time to walk in uh, beautiful Stavanger. But the most important part, of course, it's uh, chess games. And uh, after the break that we have because of coronavirus, you know, it, we are very happy to come back to real chess. And I'm sure it will be very interesting uh, games and very interesting tournament. And thank you to Norway Chess and all team of Norway Chess to organize such an event and invite us here. And you, Shora, it's your first time here in Norway Chess, but you have a lot of experience as an arbiter. But really, arbiting a chess tournament, what is really your job? What are you actually doing when you're in the playing hall? Yeah, that's a very good question because, uh, you know, most people ask about the roles of arbiters in the tournament. And I think uh, the role of arbiters is mostly a supervision role because we supervise games, we supervise clocks, we mm -hmm. supervise the score sheets. It's about function of the chess clock, if it is working properly. It's about uh, supervision of laws and regulations according to the FIDE handbook to make sure that everything is based on standards. And also we supervise fair play matters to make sure that all players are following these rules. Right. But here with the best players in the world, do you get a lot of questions from the players during the games or is it usually quiet? Um, this tournament is a very special tournament because most players are professional and they know uh, what, to, what to expect. There, there may be some questions regarding the regulation, sometimes regarding Armageddon games because in this tournament we have two different formats and this is a very exciting thing that we have here. It makes this tournament special, and uh, these Armageddon games are very exciting, but at the same time very uh, nervousing for players as well. So, uh, yeah, they have little time on the clock. Yes, that's yeah. It. But what's also very special is that we only have female arbiters. And Anamon, what do you think about that? To only have a female team? I think it's great, <laughs> and I'm really excited to work with uh, Anastasia and uh, Shore. That's great. Well, we look forward to the tournament and the best of luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with new interviewees. See you tomorrow.
We are back and as you just saw, breaking news, Sergei Karyakin has actually resigned his game against Mpomniachi. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to run through the moves very quickly, we left it on move 30, we, moved it, we left it on move 32 and Nepomniachi did in fact play the move that we thought was excellent, B4. We stumbled upon this idea, idea but uh, Nepomniachi had it all under control because after knight to B5, rook A1, this is the key point. And after the move played, knight, hang on, what was the move played? No, Sorry, take, let me just take. let me get up the right, the right board. Sorry. So because I was it, it went all so it quickly. It all went so quickly and we right. were watching it live and we were trying to <laughs> <laughs> signal that we must get back on air that I, I got a bit excited and left my old analysis. So after B4, mm. knight to B5 and rook A1 was played and now pawn takes pawn. After pawn takes pawn, A takes pawn and then this is the critical point that you yes. had to have calculated. Knight comes to D5 check. Mm. And after knight to d6, knight takes b4. And uh, the conclusion was that uh, this pawn on b6 is easily controlled by the rook and the knight, and that eventually white will win the game using his poor majority on the king side. So, wow, what an unexpected result, and uh, only 37 moves in. It is um, a bit surprising that he threw the towels so quickly but at the same time it is understandable once you uh, take another look at the, the position and you see how uh, hopeless Black's task is. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean how how would you sum up the... Uh, it's, it's impossible I mean, here, I mean yeah, the, rook it, is, it, the rook is too it, powerful, it can move across the board and yeah. uh, at the, and you can just see the players finishing up there. Yeah, you have endings where the, the, the well, the exchange, let's say the difference between mm -hmm. the, the, the rook and a piece, um, well, need not be enough, but here it is overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's, it's, and uh, yeah. we can pinpoint the moment where it all started to go wrong for Sergei Karyakin. Mm -hmm. So it was after White played knight e4, which was a novelty. Hmm. had never been played before and uh, Sergei responded with c5, it looks so hmm. far so good. Hmm. And now uh, this is where White hmm. had this amazing move, knight to f6. And in fact, after this move, there's only really one reply and that is actually hmm. just to go bishop, not bishops, but to go bishop c4. And then we calculated this long, <laughs> well, we didn't calculate. <laughs> we went on an adventure. <laughs> we went on an adventure is oh. the, where we had mm. the, the board in front of us. Yeah. And so we could see the moves quite easily. Yeah. A very long adventure. And uh, yeah. But the amazing there, thing was like, that they had to go on that same adventure in their heads. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, it was just mm. too complex for Sergei Karyakin. And he didn't spot that that was his saving yeah. resource. In fact, he played bishop takes a2. And after that... Yep. After the move B3, there was just nothing that uh, Sergei Karekin could do. I mean, but on the whole, I, I think uh, well, it's, it's obvious where the, 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 the crucial moment was. But I, I think it's a very impressive game by Jan Nep Nepomniachi. Also, the, the the quickness with which he played, uh, fully in control, uh, well, taking the chances that he uh, that he got, and what I've been thinking the, the the past days by just watching him I mean he he's just hungry he's enjoying it so much and I think that that's a great asset if, if, if you go into a match that you say okay get, give it all to me because yeah. I'm, I'm ready for it I, I want to work I want to do all this and uh, he has apparently enough uh, spare enthusiasm <laughs> to um, well to, to climb to second place here and uh, yeah I hope that he will um, will join us. Uh, yes. uh, he's being asked now to, uh, so let's see. Uh, I would love to hear uh, his story about uh, the preparation. Yeah, I, I would love to hear that too, like um, this uh, Knight F6 idea. Yeah. Has it been, is it well known? Yeah. Uh, is this something that they cooked up in the And of course he's spoken to uh, Sega Kayaki now, so he can also give his side of the mm -hmm. story, what he missed. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, because you you want to know why did you bury your bishop at a two? Yeah, um, 
I mean, if you do that, then you must have uh, a definite plan, mm -hmm. because this is, well, it's, uh, well, as you said, it's uh, Spassky Fisher all over the place. And there's Jan Nepomniachi. Yes, um, and uh, he'll be joining us for a short interview. Mm. So just bear with us for a moment. Mm. And welcome back to uh, Stavanger, where we just saw the end of the delayed game from round one between Jan Epomiachi and Sergei Kayakin, which ended in a very fine victory for Jan Epomiachi. Uh, congratulations, Jan. 
Uh, congratulations also on your team, uh, Spartak Moscow, leading 1-0, as we just saw. The first thing that Jan uh, checked when he came in, uh, you have to have your priorities. Yeah. <laughs> That, sh that, sho you. that shows the true fan. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. But uh, it's too early to congratulate, uh, you know, because when you speak about Spartak, it's you know, Still any, uh, you know, not, mm. you know, no, no score yeah. uh, can uh, make uh, you feel safe. Yeah. No, even if they go up three uh, zero. Okay, three zero is somewhat, is somewhat, but you know, still like uh, mm. it's it's never late to, yeah, for some drama. Yeah, but you are a real fan. Yeah. Uh, sort of. I mean, okay, yeah. I'm not like. Uh, uh, I'm not attending like every game, but mm. uh, yeah, when I have a chance, I'll, I'm trying to go to the stadium. And they have been your team for many years? Uh, since uh, childhood, actually. Yeah, yeah. And you recently were there for a, an honorary kickoff, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's something. They, they, they notice you as well. They, uh, well, it, w it was a fascinating game to, to, mm. to follow, Jan. And uh, well, obviously, we were the, the main thing we were wondering about was Night of six. Mm -hmm. Where did it? Where did it come from? Yes, yeah, so uh, mm. you can talk us mm -hmm. through the game. Ah, then. you want to go back? Well, well you we want to go to that situation? No, so no, not necessarily that situation. Mm. We'll start. We'll start yeah, with so uh, Rook, uh, the novelty. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, Rook D eight is the move which was um, uh, played. Mm. I think this year first by Team Urojabov in some online event. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, very solid move because okay, basically every move here is solid. So the main line is considered to be Bishop D four. Mm. Uh, a three bishop c three and so on yeah like uh, yeah. yeah a well known line but okay rook d eight is also a very fine move and we noticed Sergey played this against Maxim Vashelegraf and came yes. up with some good idea on the World Cup and easily equalized and uh, well uh, my coach Vladimir Potkin came up with this idea like probably the next day and uh, he said wow like this is uh, it looks like really fancy, like knight e4, and uh, let's say if c5, then knight f6. So basically, he was like very, very um, you know, excited about this yeah. knight f6 move. And uh, I mean, uh, frankly speaking, there is nothing wrong with black's position. But when you meet, uh, like, when you see this at the board, maybe you start feel not so comfy. Yeah. And yeah, somehow, uh, uh, you know, Sergey picked the line I didn't really. Analyze because it's uh, in my file. It's written like B three one zero. Well, I wasn't that uh, I wasn't that much sure, but uh, yeah. Well, Bishop A two is of course like a big present, yeah. and well, I feel uh, you know I feel a little bit guilty. So first of all, like Sergey uh, accepted to to play the game from the first round mm -hmm. on, the, on the rest day, and okay, they ended up like this. Yeah, so I'm. Yeah. Uh, uh, I really feel sorry. <laughs> Did it come as a total surprise to him, uh, Knight of Six? Did, did, did you speak to him? Well, probably yes. Like yeah. Knight f6 is not. I mean, either you know the move knight e4, or when you meet a knight f6, mm. uh, it. Is it a standard idea? This knight f6, or mm. is it? Uh, Maybe now it's standard. Yes, yeah, so ah, absolutely. Fair enough. But uh, I guess well, mm. as for me, I have never seen something like this before. But mm -hmm. uh, f uh, at the same time, you know, there is uh, a lot of ways uh, for white to sacrifice uh, two pieces for a rook. Yeah, like knight takes f7 idea and so on. So I guess this is one more iteration of um, a well-known idea, which yeah, which, mm -hmm. yeah, managed to surprise my mm -hmm. my opponent. And uh, we kind of worked our way through the mm -hmm. complications. We thought Bishop C4 was the only move to survive, and then Th things. Thank became you. Now, now, now I know. Yeah, thank you. Huh? Thank you. Now I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, but I was just wanted to ask you. Uh, what what I want wanted to ask you was that how. How complicated is it? How easy is it to work out everything for a human? Uh, you know, it's hard to evaluate because uh, I, I didn't work out, <laughs> you know, this uh, uh, on my own. So of course, <coughs> but you had to remember it. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, it's like uh, once I repeated this line for today's game, it was surely easier for me. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But do you do you think that uh, taking on a two was a calculation error that, that yeah, he missed? Yeah, I think Sergey he told me that uh, mm. like at the beginning when he started calculating bishop a two, he he noticed that b three like and the, 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 this is not a move. Mm. But uh, you know how it sometimes happens so when you continue calculating. Yeah, you just forget about your first very first impression, and then you say okay, bishop a two, not you know such a smart move and you just for you, you simply forget about uh, there is something really wrong with this move mm. and I think that's uh, that's the case uh, that's actually what happened with Sergei but yeah after Bishop A2 B3 I guess it's 
but he thought he'd be in time with C4 or something. Well, like I think that. he just yeah. m m forgot about B3 because once uh -huh. you see B3, it's like obvious that Rook on H6 is um, is lost. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. I can't really see any um, any decent counterplay uh, for for Black here. But then many people would say, but that's the first move you look at B3. Uh, well, I mean, as, uh, as I mentioned, I think the yeah. trick was what he, of course, he saw this move. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, it happens sometimes that you see the move and then you just start calculating other lines and you forget your very first impression. Ah. Yeah, and maybe, yeah, this is like uh, an example, you know, the case of some, you know, technical blindness. But, I okay, mean, okay, uh, no. it happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And would you say there was any other moves mm -hmm. that uh, if we were to play through the game? That's well, I'm not sure. I was really worried about uh, knight takes c3 instead of c takes b4. So c takes b4 is more or less like silent resignation. So there is no some big counterplay. I mean, in the very end. So of yeah. course uh, mm -hmm. you can uh, check some computer lines here, but I guess uh, I guess it should be why well, should be in time to prevent some counterplay. Yeah, and just uh, in the end, I guess after I played b4, knight b5. Yeah, quite. In the very end, yeah, here b4. Like move around to uh, whatever, s 30, 33, yeah? Yeah, b4. Yeah, so knight b5, yeah. uh, rook e1, and here I thought, of course, like knight takes c3. And mm -hmm. at least uh, this gives me a choice, like what do I take? Like, do I take on c5, do I take on a5? So I believe both moves uh, work, but uh, you know, taking okay. on a5, then b5, a6, yeah, knight yeah. b4 is something. And if bc5, then okay, one option is, uh, for example, play to play b5 here, rook e5, king c6. Uh, I mean, I indeed, I, I guess, yeah, white should be in time. Like, I guess the simplest way is just to collect all the pawns on the king's side and then uh, give a, try to give away a knight for, for a pawn, so it should be easily winning. And uh, probably other move is just to play something like bishop g8 instead of uh, b5. Uh, just protecting from knight c4 idea and well uh, i mean i don't think this changes evolution uh, because okay i'll just simply bring i simply bring my king like king f1 king e1 or something mm -hmm. but uh, I, I believe it would be slightly more uh, I so don't know, instead of uh, the chance to sustain so instead of uh, no no uh, as, as, it was, as, as it was played yeah like uh, 97 yeah bishop h7 no 97 i mean okay well you have to do something maybe bishop d3 instead of 97 i mean of course uh, this is the position is more or less matter of more or less simple technique, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, still I believe uh, you could, one, you know, I don't know, one could be more, you know, uh, so, so more tough to to to, to uh, in the possible defense. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah, but actually, of course, the position is mm, technical. Yeah, mm. it looked quite uh, devastating. Actually, I thought you played mm. very accurately. Well, once you blunder almost a piece, or like after bishop a2 b3 just blunder and exchange uh, i guess uh the position was not that much complex uh, to face some you know, difficulties at a uh, technical part mm -hmm. i mean that is the main reason why you could play so quickly because you didn't find it very complicated anymore i mean well i i don't think i played quickly <laughs> honestly no? i think yeah i could well, i probably could play all all the same moves uh, like a tempi but i thought like uh you know it's uh it's always easy to Hmm. Let uh, your opponent some unexpected counterplay, and that's what I uh, actually uh, did uh, in uh, f my second and third round. Yeah, like uh, against uh, Firuja and uh, Tari. So I, in both games, I had some nice chances, and hmm. uh, at least, okay, at least the. I mean, it wasn't that, that much winning, but it was very promising. And uh, here, you know, spoil such a position would be a little bit too much. Hmm. Yeah, but you, you've sometimes been criticized when you played very quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and but I'm always criticized yeah, for something. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 mostly uh, you play very quickly when you're in great shape, and then uh, that goes very well. Well, for a uh, of I don't think uh, mm. there is uh, some connection with in between shape and uh, you know the speed of play. No, it's more about you know the mm. if position demands asks for some uh, deep consideration or. Mm. On the contrary, like uh, your ideas are obvious, and you just mm -hmm. and you just push for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, uh, Sorry. Yeah. No. I, I was just going to ask because yeah. you mentioned about shape. Um, since you have no mm -hmm. rest day, mm -hmm. I mean, how are you thinking mm -hmm. about c conserving your energy, or is it just? Well, uh, as I like said like ten times before, this is <laughs> training. To, uh, this is like uh, this tournament. Yeah. The whole thing is a training. So, in some way, I even happy then there is here is no rest day. Yes. Yeah, so. 
the more tense your training is, probably is better. Uh, and uh, well, you know, we will see. But so far, uh, I can say that uh, you know, it's, I feel like it's like uh, 15 rounds already or something. Yes, I'm. I'm think more or less mm -hmm. and optimistic. And what, you, and what do you think about this time control? I mean. Well, no it's increment Armageddon matches. No, okay, Armageddon is something I uh, <laughs> I really don't like. I think it's uh, a little bit too much. So at least uh, you should make some uh, some benefits. So once again, you are punished for a draw. If uh, instead of half a point, you get like third part of the point, mm -hmm. and then you fight back to get this you know this half a point, uh, like some so some normal value for a draw. Uh, but uh, speaking about this time control, like in the classical part, it's quite interesting because it's, it probably combines, uh, you know, a classical game and a rapid game. So once you are in the, into time trouble, and if you're more or less okay with, uh, you know, moves, uh, you know, move, uh, moves uh, <laughs> completed so far, uh, you are starting playing like this normal uh, rapid mm -hmm. game with uh, 10 seconds increment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so sure if I should, really, you know, if I should write down my moves here, but. Uh, maybe I'll ask Arbiter tomorrow, <laughs> you know, in such a case when you're uh, low on time and something. Yeah. But so far you've written them down. Yeah. Okay, so far it was, yeah. uh, there was no such, such necessity. Yeah. Back to the old days, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, you um, say, well, this is part of your, your training, well, which obviously started uh, some, some time ago, I mean, immediately after, you know. Quite some time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, are you enjoying that? I mean, is, is, is it something that, uh, that you embrace, that you say, well, this, this is really fantastic, there's this great goal, this match, and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. Is that possible? Well, I'm, uh, you know, in general, of course, I'm enjoying that I learn something new, yeah, so mm. that's, that's already something, <coughs> uh, so I don't need so many extra motivation, but I mean, of course, uh, the match, uh, you know, a match is a match. And, uh, you know, at the same time, I, I would say that this part of training is uh, the most simple. Yes, normally you only need to play a game and, you know, mm. prepare a little bit, then you play a game. Mm. Uh, instead of, like, working like, 10 hours a day, you work, like, only five or six, yeah? So. Yeah. Y you see it as a fantastic learning experience. Well, you know, this is uh, more about uh, getting some practice and feeling, uh, mm. uh, you know, how does it how does it go? Yeah, basically, mm. yeah, how, how to play some classical chess uh, with mm. very strong against very strong opposition. Mm. Uh, because okay, uh, lately I think just players uh, are not really used to this because of everything has moved online. Mm. Mm. And uh, just one final question: Is it difficult uh, to play your games knowing that maybe you have to keep some information back in preparation for the match? I believe every game gives some information, yeah? so if I play like King's Gambit, it's also you know, some sort <laughs> of information, yeah? Uh, but, uh, well, I mean, of course, uh, I guess in such, a, uh, in such a situation, everybody would be slightly restricted in his opening. Yeah. So, so. Hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's a part of the game, so... Okay, well... So, well, I take, I take one final one, oh, too. okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I still want to, to, uh, to know how you, um, well, let's say, digested your, your loss in the Armageddon yesterday. I mean, it, does it, is it something that hurts a little bit, or is it, I mean... Well, I'm, I'm very sorry to say, but uh, I didn't really care. <laughs> well, once again, I mean, no, that, uh, this Armageddon is not sort of something I, um, I like about this tournament, but okay, mm. since uh, the rules are such, and uh, you mm -hmm. know the game itself wasn't uh, anything picturesque. I was like in an equal position, and then okay, I went for some very deep tactical idea, mm -hmm. which uh, actually brought me you know, to a lost position in one move. Yeah, so yeah. Very, very typical for blitz. So once this is not a KO tournament, yeah, like uh, fighting for half a point out of uh, three, I believe. Yeah, like mm -hmm. uh, sixth part is well, yeah. something I can uh, I can deal with, winning or losing. So I, I guess I played much worse game against Haryantari in Armageddon, for example, yeah, but mm. I was lucky and uh, I survived and even won in the end. But so as, as simple as that, okay, well, that was that, let's go for dinner and uh, what are you having? Or uh, today for dinner? No, 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 ah. yesterday. <laughs> yesterday? Um. I guess uh, I had... <laughs> so, <the same laughs> I don't need to know. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's just c could you switch your mind that quickly? I mean, that's... No, okay, I mean, okay, uh, the, of no. course the classical part is more, is, uh, more mm. interesting, yes. Yeah. That I mean, you that would have affected you, or yeah. well, yeah, but it didn't. Maybe it should have affected me in some way, but yeah. uh, I actually didn't didn't notice. 
Yeah, okay. But uh, I, I get the feeling that you're in extremely good mood and you're enjoying playing chess at the moment. Well, today one maybe that's like uh, that's my secret so of my good mood. So if I would, uh, you know, if the result would be the opposite, I wouldn't be, you know. So, so it's it's not as complicated uh, as people. Such think. a sunny person. Well, you you are a sunny person, aren't you? No. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> you, you think the sun has been shining enough? Let's uh, call it a day, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's evening already. Yes. Sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jan. It, uh, it was a pleasure to follow the mm. game today. And, thank you. Uh, and it's always good to see you shining. Uh, Thanks. Uh, thank you. Mm. Welcome back. So after Jan's decisive victory over mm. Sergei Karyakin, let's check out the standings and see how that impacts the leaderboard. And still at the top, well, that is Richard Rapport on eight and a half points. In second place, knocking Magnus Carlsen down to third, is Jan Pomniacci with seven points. Because remember, every win you get in the classical game counts for three points. And then we have Sergei Karekin still on four points and Ali Reza Faruja and Arian Tari on three. So it was an exciting day today. But uh, let's have a look at tomorrow's pairings because uh, things are going to get spicy because I do know that one Richard Rapport is running the World Championship match gauntlet. Yep. Uh, he will be facing Jan Napomniacci. And we have Sergei Karakin. So he had a tough day at the office today, losing to Jan Napomniacci, but tomorrow he has the white pieces against Magnus Carlsen. Jan will be playing Richard Rapport and Ali Reza Faruja will be facing off against Ariane Tari. And uh, what do you think, yeah, Dirk well, Jan? looks like the tournament is uh, pretty wide open mm -hmm. and uh, well I think uh, Jan will keep shining for a couple of rounds uh, I think that um, that is his wish yeah and, and I'm, I'm very curious to see how uh, Richard Rapport will uh, will play in the next uh, games I mean he's been very impressive so far of course we never can underestimate uh, Magnus I mean he will be ready to strike in the second well this is the tomorrow is the, the last round mm -hmm. of the first half yes and uh, that will give us an idea but um, yeah, yeah still everything to play for exactly everything yeah. to play for yeah. lots of games left yeah. and uh, this is my very final day of commentary mm -hmm. so tomorrow it will be Dirk Jan and Judith Polga sitting mm -hmm. here in the studio taking you through all the yeah. action but I'd like to thank everyone who joined us here for watching and uh, See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, uh, Yovanka. Thank it was, you. It was, it's been a was, pleasure. It was great fun, especially what you told me at C4. That was, uh, I will never forget that. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, have a great evening. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow.